in front to insert my that is uh, engineer Muhammad bin Mabrook, which makes a demo concerning Taranis, how to generate your mailing list. This is mailing list engineer Monzo Smehi, which will show you a little bit uh, various security tools, firewall needs, and also some little monitoring tools to how use them inside your infrastructure and for building your cyberspace monitoring system. Uh, uh, engineer Nabil Hosni, engineer Mary Mahshoubi has participated to the preparation of this training and maybe uh, only engineer Mary Mahshoubi will intervene. Also, Nabil Hosni will be with us if there are any questions. From CCIT.TN, uh, we have uh, Amin Rashid, which is an old guy from Junsert. And as you know, CCIT.TN is a private CCIT in Tunisia. Uh, link it to uh, Junsert. So maybe I give an overview of the program and uh, I have a problem to sorry. So the plan, first we'll try to show and showcase the, uh, the, uh, so the interest of open source, why we should rely on that field to, uh, to implement our system. And there is two parts in fact. There is a part concerning system infrastructure, which will be of interest for any security official how to strength your security infrastructure, deploying uh, firewall needs and so on. Second part third, would be how to establish a little cyber monitoring system for cyber spaces for national CCs and only net system. Second big part of the training will be about how to implement CCIT activity. So uh, system and tool, open source tool, of course, for process management system concerning alert and warning process and anything uh, process. And last and not least part will be on forensics and investigation. So maybe we'll start because be, there is various demo made by the engineers by NC and uh, GN during the uh, training. We have, it will be possible after training to uh, organize session for hands-on on the tools that uh, have been shown uh, during this, uh, this training. But now we'll make only demo because due to the uh, concept of time, because and the number of uh, so first about open source and CCIT. What is the story? When you try to establish your CCIT or any you know security um, uh, architecture, there is a cost of equipment that the most will be on the software tool side when you have license fee with recurrent big annual maintenance fee. Every year you have to pay maintenance fee. So equipment are not really the big uh, the cost center, let's say, for establishing this. this yet. How to decrease the cost center? And also, as you know, in Africa, we have a big problem of painful running administrative accusation procedure. So how to go through that and avoid delay a while Flushing the CCS or also for adding additional services and be able to more invest in capacity building. In fact, that's the most important thing for CCS and training of the CCS staff, founding of CCS activity like the awareness campaign and so on. For the securization of our internal architecture, as you know, our CCS. So a lot of hackers, a lot of people will try to penetrate your system. 
just for, for the challenge. So you need a very strong CCF security architecture. For that, you need a lot of tools and various kinds of tools also to be sure we have the necessary deployed solution to protect correctly our infrastructure. We need tools also for implementing the CCF services and process. That's another point for CCF specifically. And we need also various and multi platform investigation and forensic services. So, as you see, the big budget will come from the software side, from the licensing side, especially as I said, is there are those cost arrangements concerning the maintenance fee that you should pay every year. So the solution uh, comes from itself. It's the use of open source tools. I will not say with other lines, I will not say uh, to completely discard commercial tools, no, to complement that uh, good start. And we try to make the proof of concept that you have enough tools and very good tools to uh, really implement all of your activity with open source tools. The beautiful world of open source, we have free license, so that's concern, cost of deployment of uh, tools. Also, we have source code available, at least open way to customize those tools to, uh, to try to show you said which uh, the system developed by Tunser to uh, customizing, uh, integrating various tool and uh, this uh, window will be opened. Open tools respect the standards, all of them. We have a very good GUI now and very good community assistance. If you have any problem, just put it in the mailing list of the tool and you have various users or uh, developer of the tool that will answer you immediately and better than sometimes in commercial you know, assistance. Perennity is proved. Now, uh, we saw a lot of commercial solutions that disappeared, but uh, you can see uh, 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 from when some open source tools were created and they are still alive until today. Well, for people who want, you know, and to convince your boss and so on, and uh, that they need a very serious support. A lot of now, most open source tools offer contractual support and training and will ship. That's why we're not we call open call, in fact. And uh, the limit, the window is closing a little bit, but still a lot of solutions, still open source and the community is behind. And there is no problem that there is a lot of difference between what is offered, let's say, between Coma commercially and what is offered for the community, so free. Just some interfaces, GUI, some little functionality are offered on the commercial between Coma, a copy of the tools. Mr. Nabil. There is someone meet concerning Abu, it's insecure, why? Because the code source is open and anyone can see it and can, you know, may find the holes and make conclusion. The opposite, in fact. As long as you expose your code, there is a lot of people that will give you all the uh, holes that exist in it, vulnerability, and then they are patched, they are closed more rapidly than in commercial tools, in fact. Mr. Nabil? Well, yes. I see the only the first slide of your presentation. Oh, e e e so there is a problem here with the uh, PowerPoint. Maybe sure. I don't know. Uh, sorry, I will stop sharing and start again. Sharing. Maybe. Do you see the slide? Yes, yeah. it's okay now. Sorry, so uh, you go rapidly, but no problem. I think uh, I expressed the need, the idea. Uh, I should have a little problem with my PowerPoint. I don't know. Do you see it? Wonder? 
the slides are yes. Yeah. Yes, it's okay, yeah, Mr. Nabi. Thank you. Those are the slides where I go through, so I just spoke of that, but I am told there is a need of a lot of tools and the need budgets and solutions of open source, and that's a concern and beautiful world of open source. And now let's come back to the meat. So if there was any truth in that, uh, you know, closed sources are very valuable, so winter will be the most secure West, and we all know what uh, the situation. And believe me, I got the occasion to work on, uh, with a German company on their system developing, you know, we make some early activity here in Tunisia with our young engineers, very successful it was. And first, what the German, what uh, the guys told me, we have a very secure operating system for their firewall. That's what they say in the brochure and so on. When we come to develop and to customize their tool, we got, of course, the source code and the operating system. We discovered that the operating system was, at that time, DOS. Uh, but in the brochure, in the commercial brochure, we have our own operating system, very secure and so on. So there is insecurity, in fact, if you have not, you know, access also to the code, to the source of the product. Second, might uh, commission will have better support, like I just discussed. Open source tool now have contractual cheap support, training assistance, and uh, you can rely on the very rich and friendly assistance from the community. That is secure, more secure concerning uh, assistance. Believe me, just post a question, a problem, and you will have values made coming, explaining, assisting you. So I don't think there is any problem with that. If you want contractual support, this is feasible. Uh, this is how you have access to the subcommission training and assistance also with the cheap assistance, in fact. <laughs> what open source will offer also as of donor investments by this free access to source code, this will be an enabler for research and development activity and will permit the OCC to integrate tool, to customize them, uh, go starting, but going deep and deep to maybe perhaps develop new functionality in the tools and sharing it with the community. Also, you are the legal provider of the security solution. When you go to OCC to you know, handle with them incidents. You, you will not let them, you know, you'll find, especially in our country, you'll find people without also firewall sometimes, catastrophic situation, when you should at least immediately provide some strength of their security. So install them needs a firewall should be, you know, the minimum things to do. Uh, for open source, you will be a legal provider of such solution. You can do that with commercial tool. You have not the right to have a copy of that, because the copy is to you, for you, not for the other clients. But for the, of course, with open source, you can do it and uh, without any problem of legality. So now let's start the first part of our training is how to build your security architecture with open source tools. Uh, if there is any question, please raise your hand and maybe, uh, and uh, Tracy with, with us will again open the mic and you can post your question if you have any. So now we'll go through how to build a very strong security architecture of your network. And as I told you, you are the always and to the, will try to attack any third in the country just for the challenge from inside or from outside. So to be sure that we have a very strong system, very secure. It is very important for the reputation of the third. If any incident will happen or people will disgrace you and think those people are not good. So very important to have very security architecture. This is interesting also for any security official. <laughs> Let's see a little bit uh, what's the situation inside the generic template of what is still done. Some people uh, create their 
Sí, es cierto eso. I will say cert from now on, uh, knowing it's sí, es cierto. Cert inside sometimes another organization. So you have a line of the host of the CCIT, your line, and of course you'll be connected to internet. You have will have server, your internal server. Maybe we'll discuss that after you have your cyberspace monitoring system and we contain the database, coupled with the database. This is a generic template of macro template of the CCIT you know, the network. Let's say how to start securing this architecture. First of all, what to do, of course, I will go for people who are fluent in security tools. Sorry, but uh, uh, there is some people that uh, maybe need a little bit to understand what is a firewall and so on. You can do uh, slowly a little bit to explain to them it's an occasion. Sorry for that. So for first protection of the perimeter, uh, external perimeter of the uh, uh, network, but also inside your network. You have various network segments with various security policy, various sensitivity, and you have to dispatch those in various what you will call DMZ to better protect them. So what's a firing system? Uh, it's like checkpoint at the perimeter of your network, which will control what can go inside your network, and also you can control where your people will get out, which services are permitted for the going to internet. But the principle is just to with people accustomed with network, and of course you are, is to block some ports. And by that, we block all warm propagation and we just open the port for legitimate services. So our network is now is well protected from especially this warm propagation and services that we don't want they can enter our network or can go out of our network also. So what the firewall do is it permits you filtering, but in, but also out, and you can decide well, which services with the protocol you permit to your guys to use uh, accessing to the internet. Of course, some services, you know, P2P and so on, are dangerous also for the internal network, and generally they have blocked up the, up the firewall. It will hide, of course, your association tenancies from external, you know, intruder. It's uh, firewall permit the protection against attack based on vulnerability of communication protocol, DDoS, spoofing, sync fluid, and so on. But also very important is permit to divide your internal network in different zones of security, what we call DMZ, demilitized zone in fact but in fact militarized zone you know different zone of high security of various level of security and also of high security with access control between those zones. a firewall does not control internal attack you know it's just at the frontier of your network so all what's happening inside the network is it cannot be seen by the firewall by its own, it cannot also protect you against content-based uh, attack, content threat, since it just block ports and so on. But you will see that you can add other tools at the level of a firewall that can permit also to protect against content threat. So if we go to our architecture, what we do now is to partition our network you know, we have the incident handling team, which is very critical. We have and the rest of the team. I choose that to divide that into two, but you can more divide. So for everyone from the internal network, you will create a zone security zone with proper security policy. So since you trust, of course, you can do isolate them the most. They can do not a lot, maybe. From the CC, we can access some of the services, control of access, but they cannot enter our internal network if there is a host you know, of your CC. 
accident handling will be in the DMZ, in the zone by themselves, because very, they are very critical, they handle they have a level of confidentiality very high, so we put them in their own zone. And the other teams, maybe you can put them all together, but we can divide more. And the other teams, we can subdivide them in various zones, in various DMZ. Server will be protected in, uh, well protected in their own zone. We see which can access those server. The, if you have database for monitoring of the cyberspace, we put that aside because it's critical because we'll have our system gazing some information from the outside, from the internet, but uh, it has to be coupled, not coupled with the database it manipulates. So we can do what we want, partitioning our internal network into various zones of security and, and securing a security policy for each zone relatively to its criticity. So some people who told you firewall are not really able to firewall since it is at the perimeter of your network. If it happened, it get down. So it block all your access to internet. So mm -hmm. normally we what we do is we have two firewall uh, working uh, all together at the same time. If one fall down, the other will take the hit and will continue, you know, providing you know, access to the external network, to the internet. This is provided by some commercial solution uh, at uh, hardware-based you know, product, but we can do it also with open source. We have various tool card, PFC, I think, that we can put onto two server, and they introduce this heartbeat, you know. Uh, so we have a firewall, uh, a firewalling system that could not be uh, down completely. If one will be down, the other will continue to give you access to the external network. So the solution exists also with firewall, with open source solution. Uh, well, firewall are the checkpoint, as you understood, for any in and out communication flow. So it's generally the point to lay on and we integrate on them other kind of control, as I said before, content inspection virus. There is some you know, track from outside using what you allow the to level of power of services report open and that you can inspect also the content, what is going on on those legitimate flow in fact that people can insert attack, you know. Uh, on the part that you are. You have UT, what we call UTM, you know, five or six, you know, the firewall that uh, on the integrate. What concern virus control. And we have the next generation firewall, which will uh, and deep inspection firewall, which add another level, and they can inspect the content and make intrusion detection at the level of the firewall for so better protecting your infrastructure. And we can also introduce access control and let no one can access our network because it was strongly identified um, to access any internal services. This is feasible and is generally feasible at the level of firewall. That's why firewall integrates a lot of tool of fact in reality. <laughs> Also, it's a point if you will uh, connect to other external network, uh, you know, of, uh, uh, if you have subsidiary or with a partner, of course, the VPN, VPN is installed at the level of fire. VPN, of course, will permit that your communication are encrypted and there is authentication of the two sides. So, uh, once uh, so going through the internet. Now we will introduce one tool, which is PFSense, for example, and on which there will be a demo will be made now by uh, Monzo. Uh, this is a very good tool. It's a stateful firewall mm -hmm. with very rich filtering capability. You have numerous features that are in the annual control process. So with virus also filtering, they're filtered by operating system that can you know, enter the 
you can also go to layer two to map, you know, control, uh, limited the surveillance per connection and so on. It's a very good web interface for the configuration of components and very good graphical reporting in real time tools, monitoring tools that can permit you to well, see what's going on at the level of the file. It can run in many virtualization environments. It offers high availability through the software card and PSN. You have just to add another server, a little server for PC if you have a little you know, network. And also for B, you know, functionally you offer load balancing. Load balancing means that you can load balance the entering flow if you have uh, a web server that is visited by a lot of people and try to load them, but in the tools I want to have very good performance stuff access. He is not the one functionality with failover, not the HTTP server, relay, and so on. What is interesting also, and what we do a lot of time, is by one click, and we will show you that. You can start at the level of firewall also. Detection of intrusion, what goes through the content if there is an attack going through the communication that you are known. Uh, what we call online needs that can control those attacks. Various solutions of uh, VPN and a lot much more uh, tools that you can install at the level of the file, of this file, of the instance. And those are so, but the open source solution that you can insert. So there is very easy integration and durability of open source solution, as you can see from from PFSAS. You can integrate various tools from various uh, various open source solutions to run together without any problem, due to the respect of uh, you know. Uh, norms of uh, interfacing between the team and so on. He offers very good uh, tools for uh, graphical tools that can uh, maintain the load so the steel file state uh, all go to the, uh, all interfaces, uh, the packet uh, message generate and so on, CPU utilization and so on. And you have also real time. Tools like SVG graphs, PC server, in fact, one gigahertz, uh, one gigabit of RAM will be enough. Of course, depend about the size of your network. But you can also install it on all PC. If you have small network, you can run on CPU 500 megahertz, you know, the old PC that you never even are not using, if possible, I still work. So now, just uh, for people who are the firewall, firewall is like a router, uh, but with the security, you know, uh, added functionality. And uh, in fact, to configure it, you have to say which flow you will permit. There is rules, and you say which services are permitted. The last rule will be deny all, so they are easy to configure. Means those uh, I permit HTTP. Uh, web, I permit mail, and all after you say the denied. All the other are denied, and you guys can see it's very simple to configure. And we have very good functionality about deny, drop, and or accept, you know, flow. There is the possibility to deny, deny drop, but mean you can drop packets, uh, don't permit them to enter the network without but saying that you did that so the hackers got to have very fine to connect packets to other you know tools to other spectrum or target packets is very easy configuration man so uh, what will be offered for you online is uh, after training we offer a virtual uh, you know CSC plan, which will be configured and ready with the needed tool, and we will give you the will send us your email and create account for you. You can enter 
this uh, space of training because we not have time to make real no, on, hands on. During this session, we try to prove you and to go to the most possible to prove you okay. efficiency and the, uh, this of open source. But uh, don't hesitate. If you need uh, a specific you know, training on any of the tools that we show or other tools, we will organize additional training session and people will go uh, to use configuration, and so on of those tools. This will be offered for the after training. Now we go to uh, number. We'll make you a presentation of PFSERS rapid demo of PFSERS. I will stop my sharing. Thank you. Number, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Nabil. I will share my screen. Do you see my screen? Yes, Mandir, we see your screen. Yes, Mandir. Thank you. So we will start with the first uh, demonstration about uh, the PFSense uh, firewall, uh, which is uh, an open source feature rich firewall. Along with firewall services, it also performs a variety of uh, network and uh, security related uh, functions and it's run uh, on free BSD uh, and practically all management uh, of the firewall uh, after uh, uh, the initial configure, uh, configuration and the initial setup uh, is done through the graphical user uh, interface. So first of all, uh, what does uh, PFSense stand for? So PF does mean packet filtering, and the sense does mean we need to make sense to packet filtering, uh, and that is the origin of the PF sense. So we were, in this demo, I will show you the PF sense GUI, the graphical user interface. We see uh, the features, and we will uh, base our demo on this uh, uh, architecture. Uh, here is the firewall PF sense. We have uh, a DMC uh, zone, we have one interface and uh, the LAN interface. Uh, we will, uh, I will show you how to create a DMZ uh, interface with the PFSense, how to create a rule. We will allow access to, in, to the internet from the DMZ uh, subnet to uh, multiple ports, and we allow traffic from LAN network to the web uh, server which is uh, inside the DMZ zone and we will block traffic from a specific uh, address. It's just an example. Uh, it's, it's up to you to, to make your rules, to make your, uh, your, your configuration uh, basic on your policy and your uh, uh, security strategy on your organization. So first of all, I will uh, log into the PFSense dashboard. We have here an informational uh, dashboard. We have a system information, the interfaces, and the, the traffic uh, graphs. Uh, we can customize the dashboard uh, by uh, available widget. Here we can add uh, the status of services, which is here, you can start and you can stop and you can reload any installed services. Uh, you can also uh, add a firewall logs, uh, the interface statics. Uh, we, we can uh, uh, add the suricata alerts. We can show you this, uh, this uh, again, and uh, you can uh, uh, customize the dashboard by the picture of uh, your organization. So I will start by creating the DMZ interface. So I will delete this interface. First of all, I, we will choose interface assignments and we will add here the new interfaces. Opt does mean the optional interface, which refer to any additional interface other than the one and the LAN. We will choose the name of this interface DMZ and we, we will enable this interface. For IPv4 configuration type, we will choose static IPv4. And 
I will assign this IP address to the, this interface. So uh, after this uh, workshop and this uh, training, uh, we will give you uh, a credential next week to access to uh, all tools and all uh, platform. So uh, do not hesitate to put your email on the chat zoom. So after putting uh, the, the IP address, I will uh, click to save and uh, we need to apply any change here. And now the interface DMZ is up and uh, this is uh, the IP address. So here uh, there is a lot of feature offered by uh, uh, PFSense. Here there is a VPN, the virtual private network, IPsec, L2TP, uh, OpenVPN. There is also, uh, we give you a possibility to, uh, to make high availability synchronization. We need another node or another uh, firewall uh, cluster, and we can put the another IP and the credential for the, the, the other PFSense. We have the diagnostics options. There is a lot of uh, tools. If there is any issue on our uh, PFSense or, or uh, our network. So uh, I will give you uh, more details about the interface. So uh, the, the interface one does mean uh, wide area network is the untrusted public network outside of the firewall. The LAN referred to local area network uh, is the commonly private side of the firewall and the DMZ is a demilitarized zone, uh, which is an area uh, where public uh, servers are reachable from the outside or are reachable from uh, the internet. So now it's okay for uh, DMZ interface now we will uh, i will show you how to create uh, uh, rules first of all we will allow traffic from dmz subnet to uh, http or and allow not uh, traffic from dmz subnet to dns ports and uh, allow traffic uh, from dmz subnet to uh, https uh, uh, port and uh, uh, we want to 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 give access from dmz subnet to network to to internet if uh, we have uh, any update and so on so first of all we we choose firewall rules and uh, we select the dmz interface by default there is no rule defined on this interface we click added and uh, when we create a rule we need to assign this rule to interface or to interfaces so in general, rules are uh, read from top to the bottom in the list. And uh, the traffic is uh, proceeded based on the first uh, match rule. So we, we choose pass for the action. The interface is DMZ. Uh, for the source, we will choose DMZ net. And for the destination, we will choose any and I will select HTTP port for the destination port. And it's, uh, uh, it's important to add a description, allow traffic HTTP port. And we can enable log packet filter that are handled by this rule and we click save. We repeat this for the other ports. So we select DMZ network and for the port we select HTTPS. and you click save. And if we have many rules, you can use this icon to copy these rules. 
now we will choose for the protocol for the DNS, we will choose TCP and uh, UDP. And uh, I will select DNS port. And we need to apply change by this uh, button. Now we have uh, this uh, three uh, rules on the DMZ interface. Uh, after that, I will allow traffic from LAN network to the web server inside the DMZ. So there is here uh, aliases. It's very important to use aliases to make uh, easier creating the rule. We need here the name of web server and I will put the IP of the web server. We click save, we apply change, and uh, we choose rules. On the LAN, I will add the rules. So for the action, I will choose pass. For the interface, this is LAN. And for uh, the source, we click LAN network. And for the destination, I will choose single host or alias and we put uh, web server demo and we will choose the power http and i click save this is uh, th this is the rule of uh, permit uh, access from the lan to the web server demonstration so i can test this rule Here, this is uh, the, the LAN network, and I will access to the DMZ web server. This is the IP of the web server. Wonder. Yes. You can back to PF Sans. Okay. And for the DMZ, uh, the IP, it's uh, the mask, it's uh, go to firewall interface no no for, for the for the pf sans go yes. to interface the en interfaces dmz and i think to change the mask the mask no no go go it's it, it, it's okay for for the mask okay uh, it, it's okay So normally we can, uh, so after, after the, the, the configuration of uh, this rule, normally we have access from the LAN network to, to the web server. So uh, uh, this is uh, the demonstration about rules and about uh, PFSense. Uh, I uh, give now the floor to Mr. Nabil to continue with the presentation I, uh, and I come back to you with the uh, uh, installation of uh, package Suricata. Thank you. Thank you. The purpose of the demo is to show how easy it is to configure and the quality of interfaces of the replica interface. And uh, you see it's easy. So better, you know, uh, and so on and so on. As I told you, you can organize if people are interested, you know, special uh, training on installation and also configuration going uh, step by step so that you can follow correctly what's going on. Thank you, Mother, for 
Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Nabil. And uh, maybe you show after the richness, as I told you, you can install other tools on the firewall to better protect your infrastructure. So uh, let's uh, continue. I have a little problem. We go through now to section two. Now that you protect your, your infrastructure, second step to do is to install this protection. As I told you, to better protect now. As you saw, Mongo has opened some ports, and uh, this will give opportunity to hackers to use the sport and try to, to enter your firewall through the port. So we need another level of protection, in fact. So what concern the internal level? To control what flow are going down, are entering, you know, what uh, tentative of intrusion are entering through those open ports. And that's the, the purpose of now something more of uh, security. I can't talk with my Sorry. Professor Nabil, is it, would yeah. you be able to speak a little bit louder into the microphone? You're very soft. So now, let me install it first. First firewall, as a CCS, you need a very strong architecture. You need, in fact, only one firewall. A firewall is a software tool, and you can and also have vulnerability inside that will appear. Generally, what we do is we install the double firewall, two firewalls, another firewall, in fact, firewall of another type that should not be the same product. Because if there is a vulnerability in the first one, the second one would be okay, and vice versa. So generally, we have start double, you know, platform, two firewalls from different, you know, open source uh, product. Let's say this is feasible with uh, easy with your uh, open source. We have not to pay additional license and so on. So this is normally typically the architecture is to have two firewalls. Someone is vulnerable, well they can put in all the devices and it can go through. Here, sometimes we don't need a very heavy you know, control because we enter, you know, some website, in fact, let's say all the military server that we give some threat protection. But from here, we need very strong protection so no one can enter our internal network. Mm -hmm. And for that, you have a choice. Uh, you have a choice to choose a lot of tools, open source tools. Of GPL, which is next generation firewall with deep protocol analysis. There is uh, NG firewall, but this one is for medium sized network, but config server firewall, smooth wall, and yen, and so on. You have a rich offer of firewall, but we can choose another one to deploy as an additive protection of the perimeter of your network. Now, let's go to what I was. Introducing uh, is uh, the open ports uh, to firewall. As uh, Mongo showed you, he should open HTTP so that people can go to the internet. But through that port can come some attacks. So, what we need is an intrusion detection tool to control if there is attack exploiting these open ports and stop them. It's what we call network LDS or network IPS. We'll explain the difference in the What is the principle of these tools, the network IPS? Is it's a, a, it's an agent that uh, sees the flow without disturbing them? 
So he doesn't deny legitimate flow, but he observes the flow. So when he sees that he is tempted in one tax through an open port, he can react immediately, at depends on what we call NIPS, and stop the attack. Or TCP attack can be stopped immediately, when not permitting them to go further inspecting the inside network. So he doesn't uh, delay his to make flow, his sniffer, in fact, on the network we do, and he would detect any possible, any signature of attack that is uh, trying to enter the inside the network. He will alert and block. This is a neat network intrusion detection system. When he stop the attack, we call it IPS, NIPS. Uh, network intrusion prevention system. Because, so all TCP, you know, uh, based attack are stopped immediately. All UTP uh, data gram, you know, protocol, there is difficulty to stop them. But what can do in NIPS is to configure the firewall, to say to the firewall, hey, there is, I observed an attack coming from this IP address. And he sent him a new rule to block this IP address, so, so he block also the UTP and the flow. And there is a good interaction between uh, firewalls, open source firewalls, and NIPs, open source NIPs, to permit that easily. The one of the best tools is not the oldest one. Well, the problem only with the SNOT is scam a little bit that it was acquired by Cisco in 2013. But people from SNOT take the head and say we should conserve the open source version alive. And Cisco accepted that and still until today, you know, offered the uh, community version is offered. Just a little problem is when you need you no know, fresh signature because the needs will uh, always have to be updated. Signature of attack discovered has to be updated at the level of the, uh, for the NIPS. So, so you should pay a little bit uh, around four hundred you know, dollar a year per sensor if you for business usage. Will be just thirty dollars if for education or personal use. And, but still, a signature of one minus one still free. You know? But uh, of course, we need the good protection. So it's not very expensive, in fact. If you don't like that, that is, the community has reacted to that. And they are offering rich and fresh signature for SNOT and other tools as a reaction of this attitude uh, of Cisco. For example, Silicata is the other tools which is combined NIPS, in fact, but also network security monitoring, and also can go to, more deeper to the cap, you know, to go to the, the level of the pact and make uh, your own inspection of what's going on. It's developed by OACF. It's a very high performance NIPS because it uses uh, it take uh, full advantage of multi-core processor, so it's multi thread so he, he achieved very efficient intrusion detection, high speed traffic. So, um, sometimes NIPS, the specific attack to the long term, the NIPS is to put a lot of flow. So the NIPS is overloaded a little bit and to the tank you hit to insert the attack, knowing that the NIPS is overloaded. This is a solution is better you know, protect against this kind of attack. And uh, we have another solution to protect against that attack. I will talk about it in a few minutes. We have another very good tool developed by Berkeley Pro, which is based on behavioral approach. So, like SNOT, uh, Silicata is based on signature that you have to update every time. But for Bruno, he tried to see if any you know, communication, any content-based attack exists. So in his behavioral approach, he can detect zero-day attack. And you need such kind of tools because for very high security level entities are and generally uh, attacked with very new attack, not 
yet to un unknown, you know, not in this color, so that, that is not the signature of this attack uh, found. So he has very powerful script language for detecting new attack. Uh, he can trigger attacks or even makes. He's compatible with a small tool. He has yes, the dictionary of, uh, you know, the signature of attacks, existent attack, but he can also discover new one. And he has a very good learning mode because the problem with those tools is sometimes legitimate flow are marked as, you know, tentative of attacks. Uh, you have uh, first to configure it to show him if you have uh, an internal scanner that uh, make the vulnerability assessment of your tool, for example, he is a guy acting as an attacker. So I have to tell him, no, don't, don't uh, you, you know, put those at an attack. I know that I'm making vulnerability scanning and so on. And after that, he can work very easily and very well. So maybe we, like I told you, there will be uh, a virtual, you know, network, uh, as you explained it, and will be available online. I saw that you sent your e email. Thanks for that. And we we'll we'll give you uh, also mailing list to post us uh, all your need. So you can do it with the uh, now on the chat of Zoom, but, but you can do it after that uh, through mail and better explain your needs and so on. So now we we'll go to the second demonstration. Uh, again, Mundo will show you uh, Suricata, in fact, Philip Suricata, and how to insert it, and as he said, on the fire. But we can install it also as the sniffer on the internal network to discover internal attack that can go uh, anyway, for another way to, to see what's going on in the inside network. So please, Mama, I will stop. Okay. It's okay for uh, my screen. Yes, go ahead, Mama. Okay. okay, okay. So we continue uh, with the uh, with the next demonstration, which uh, uh, we will show you how to install a package on uh, PFSense. This package is uh, uh, Suricata, which is a network uh, intrusion detection system. So uh, we choose system and uh, we choose a package manager. We have a lot of uh, package. There is uh, uh, already many installed package and we have if if we we want to install a new package we click available packages so we need just to click on install and the, the package will be installed so here suricata is already installed first of all we need to configure the package on the service on the services we choose suricata and we need to settings the rules. So we need to check uh, which rules are used. Here we will use uh, ET Open Emerging Threat rule, ET for Emerging Threat. We, uh, we select th this option and we will use a custom uh, URL for uh, ET Open downloads. And we put the, uh, the link here for uh, downloaded rules. We select also uh, the Feodo botnet C2 IP rule set, also for the ab abuse.ch, and uh, we hide deprecated rules uh, category. We can uh, choose the interval of updated rules, six hour or one day or for today. It's up to you to change this option. And uh, we click uh, we click save. Uh, after that, we choose updates to update our uh, rule set. We just need to click on update. So here, the last update was uh, yesterday. Three 
in the signature of a tax. Uh, just yes. So for this, the, the first update, it uh, it it uh, it take time. I will so close this uh, this task, and uh, I will show you. We we uh, we uh, we will choose the uh, interface to monitor, which is uh, the one, and here the address of the one interface. So now we will choose another IP from the outside, from the internet, and we will attack this IP to, to see the detected malicious traffic. So here, uh, this is the, the, uh, the threat actor uh, IP, uh, and we will choose the uh, alert option to see the attack in real time. So we will clear, clear this log. We will choose network mapper to scan our IP, SV for service version, and uh, the script is to, to detect the vulnerability on any IP. And I will attack my uh, one interface. And uh, we need to show here the source IP of the threat actor. There is also another uh, threat actor that scan my IP. And uh, our scan is detected, potentially bad traffic. And this is uh, the IP of the threat actor. And this is uh, the signature ET scan suspicious inbound to uh, MS SQL port uh, traffic or MySQL port and uh, other, other many uh, signature. All, all this detected the traffic are show in the alert log view filter. It's an ongoing attack and we can see all the, the information of the attack here. We see the protocol, we see the date, we see the category or the class of the alert, the source IP and the, the destination, which is the one interface. And here it's the description. So that's it for the Suricata demonstration. Sinabil, uh, the floor is you. Is yours. Thanks, Mona. As, as you see, and we can program, of course, action. And, and you can see that uh, at the level of the same uh, tools, you can install various tools. Suricata is not the uh, same product as PFSense, but there is interaction between them. And as you, you saw, we were able to to install it on the other one rapidly and easily with integrated interface between the two. Let me... Ah, okay. It's working, sorry. So the problem uh, is now with NEEDS and NIPS, as you understood a little bit, NIPS is a NEEDS active. He can stop the attack. NIP NEEDS just log as the uh, Monza configured it, but he can indeed let uh, Suricata acted as a NIPS. Uh, the action, as you saw, can be made stop the attack, not just log. Now the problem with NEEDS is that they, as there, there is a loss of efficiency in case of high hard throughput. As like I told you, there is possible overload of the needs. Is a sensor, but if there is a lot of tentative of attacks, we can overload it. Uh, Suricata is a high performance one, which is uh, very difficult to do, but still possible. And 
in uh, the exams uh, situation is still possible. There is various tools that do that work, uh, like Prague router and so on, that try to overload the needs. And after that, try to enter an attack that uh, insert an attack when the needs, we know it's overloaded. It's not very efficient to get distributed attack and advanced diversion techniques sometimes. You can now, he suffered we need a lot of switch, of course, uh, as a sensor, he has to have access to all the flow. So we have to have switch mirroring both on which we put the needs of the NIPs. But the problem comes also from encrypted flow. When you open, if you wanna, we are going to IPv6 and sometimes, uh, as you saw, the sensor, it's a sensor. It's, observing the flow. If they are encrypted, of course, he cannot discover an attack because the flow are encrypted. So an accompanying solution to stand the protection of network is what we call host-based IPS or host IDS. Uh, you understood the difference IDS, IPS, is, is it active or just log? So they don't depend on traffic load. They're efficient to get distributed attack and uh, AET, adventure diversion technique, and they permit VPN without any problem because they are installed at the level of workstation. So after the flow were decrypted and you can discover if an attack is coming in uh, through the tunnel, through the VPN. That's why we have to start them also in our network. And we have tools that we can manage them. Some we have sensor management uh, because they are started at the level of uh, you know, sensitive uh, server and a lot of organization. And there is possibility to make sensor management on those as EDS or as EPS. One good solution is your SEC, which uh, discover a lot of rootkits of the rootkit means sensitive of attacks at the level of the workstation. They make log analysis to discover that there is uh, uh, the possibility of intrusion and check the integrity of the file system and the process of the of process. They're available on all platforms, Mac, uh, Linux, VMware, and of course on the platform. They can also interact on the IPS to if there is a discovery to interact between the two tools. We have can configure the alerts that they send you an email when they discover there is a sensitive of attack or uh, also uh, you can program the response so to stop the attack. There is simplified offline management service to manage policy across those, uh, all the workstation on which you installed as EDS and they are currently under PC DSS for the banking sector and so on. As you see, there is a lot of rich functionality in respect of standard, respect of you know, content and compliance requirement also in open source tools. Another good tool is good centralized logging and maintenance is some hand, which provides some functionality, but really uh, good centralized learning and maintenance. But the most famous is OSEC, in fact, the most popular. Now, so in our network, we divided our zone with DMZ, you know, zone when we isolate our teams uh, and our server and the system. And um, it should be that we will install NIPs at the level of all, in the internal of all those zones to discover if there an attack that goes through the firewall. So we can install as many NIPs as we want since they are license free. That's sometimes we need to cut in a number, number of tools, which means more license or more expensive license. We'll install also hash EDS on the server and all sensitive workstation to discover if an attack has goes to the NIPs and as I explained before. So we have we have now a good, you know, protected system network protected we make some work now when put tools doesn't mean anything if you don't administer them well administers mean first seeing to the logs and seeing what's going on i showed you one that you have to go to the log and see if there is logging of tentative of attacks of drive of attacks 
So we'll make an overview a little bit of administration tool, uh, seeing that we have very powerful tools for log processing and for alerting from the uh, processing of the logs. And we have one solution uh, uh, world exists, which is seeing security information manager, uh, security event managers, or simple security log manager. As you see, we have a lot of tools from Pilot or SAS, which is an open source of Pilot, which uh, is uh, not commercial but open source solution to implement security event manager based to, uh, based on ACID and other tools and the interaction between open source tool and we can carry an the alert coming from smart needs system SAGAN, SAGAN introduced correlation between events so you can discover. You know, distribute the attack more easily with those kind of tools. Watch. We can alert you on that is the pre-configured, you know, entries that you want to be alerted about it. And this is the log and and other tools. Those are the main things, but there is other tools available. <coughs> I discovered that when I put full screen, we have this problem. But now this is minor zoom. Well, sorry for that. So you should have your log analysis tools to to permit that uh, you can discover, you know, process various log and detect if there is an attack coming. A very good tool which makes correlation by its own. It has a very uh, powerful engine for processing the two disaster, which uh, was took as departure for the uh, Sahar system, which will be presented after. So it's a CM which make event correlation, but normalization after that correlation of a various log of a various events. He can combine log, assess data, and discover data. He can show you uh, not very visible trace of attack through that correlation. So it is very important to have all the CM inside of your network to discover the distributed attack and to be alerted very rapidly that an attack is going on. Of course, there is little piece of alert from the various tool inside it from the needs or from the hash EDS. As you see, you work with a lot of tools now, Oxidicata, uh, OSEC, measure for, also for traffic analysis in case of DDoS. There is a uh, measure is a, a tool for monitoring just the uh, flow of protocol at the, uh, the level of the network. And much more, more tool that can be used to correlate and to come out and to uh, to alert you rapidly at the start of any attack with correlating the, the event from various, the various security tools that you installed in the inside of your network. Professor Nobel, you're very, very quiet. Is there any possibility you can um, maybe switch a microphone or sit a bit closer? Uh, to my, microphone? My, um, the sound is low. It's very low. Yes, you've, you've kind of been cycling. Um, you sound very far. Okay, ju just a second, Mr. Nebir. I will give you a mic. Okay, thank you. Okay, we can come back with the Microsoft tool. You know, I should have used the open source tool anyway. So, second tool that you need inside your network is you have to always scan all your servers and workstation to discover vulnerabilities before an intruder will discover them. So we need to periodically, uh, you know, make vulnerability assessment of all our infrastructure to 
to see if uh, we have an outdated version, an old patch, to see if there is misconfiguration inside the tool, and to close them. So we should use vulnerabilities mm -hmm. kernel. And for that, we have good tool, which is OpenBAS, which is uh, it's fought from a Twitter, let's say. <laughs> from the open source community from 2008, which is Nessus. It's one of the best uh, vulnerabilities current, but become fully commercial without <coughs> staying offering the open source, you know, version. But OpenVAS was the reaction of the community of open source guy, and they created OpenVAS, which is uh, <coughs> of the same power, of the same power, and uh, it permits you so to scan your network or your station and to try to discover by like, putting the micro maybe slightly. If you hear me better. Oh, that sounds much better. Yes. Ah, okay, great. Great. I have two microphones. <laughs> <laughs> so we are in separate uh, desks. The high availability. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so those kind of tools are very important to, to use to uh, always scan your internal network and discover liability before a hacker do uh, internal or external. Sometimes it comes from training you bring, you know, inside your network. There is always a challenge against uh, certain. Oh, I succeeded to, uh, you know, so we have to be very careful about that. There is uh, now a concern and you are in charge and it means if national C-cert of your own cert, your private C-cert, to scan your web server, of course, uh, sometimes of the web server of your constituency. And for that, we have very good tools also. We have like two work, it's a uh, very good web server scanner he uh, tried to discover six thousand, more than six thousand potential dangerous fly, fly in a program and check for outdated version of uh, services uh, for a very specific problem of uh, over 2070 server. We have also another solution, Skipfish from Google, who can try to, uh, it's a dictionary based probe of your network, you give you a map of your, your your web server and with annotation about the problem, security problem exactly needs. And a lot of other tools, Wisecar, Web Scrap, Web Security Powers, and so on, that permit you to test the vulnerability of your web servers. Of course, your web server is the external, uh, you know, eyes uh, of your institution. It's very important to make them very secure and to uh, Close holes if they exist. Also, for our community of uh, national web servers, sometimes to have a check of their level of security. Uh, what we lose inside, and for you, it will be very easy to do it for the constituency. That's one of the things that we have to think about while you use such tools, invest in learning such tools. We have Kali Linux, so the Linux distribution like EBD which can, with a group more than 600 tools, open source tools around them, and some uh, uh, other, you know, tools that you can use to uh, script, very uh, evaluated scripts of uh, vulnerability assessment of what you want, a wireless uh, uh, network, uh, that is the vulnerability testing for our web, for our, you know, password attack, uh, sniffing, reverse engineering, all what you want is the group and then this Kali distribution. You can test those tools one by one and see what go to you and combine them in script, complex script, if you want to make more, uh, you know, um, complex, you know, uh, assessments. Uh, about forensic, there is forensic tools, and uh, I mean, at the end of training, we'll show you some of the tools. Now, concerning user access control, also, we have to put it uh, you know, side network uh, web access control and how people get out or better for that we can control. 
And you have this succession of squid, which is a proxy, squid guards, which permit also you are filtering if you want to control uh, that people are productive and uh, all at the extern allow only list of URL or discard some URL. I don't tend to do that. Our guys have sometimes to make this see sport and so on, but you have those if uh, education entity and so on, sometimes it's important to control web access to uh, buy keywords or though, uh, just permitting uh, excluding some sites that they go through. You have uh, only to install uh, this proxy server uh, on the proxy screen. And this make it easier, in fact, to configure your firewall. Since if you put a proxy, all access to internet have to go to, through that proxy. So here it's easy to configure the firewall to permitting that people go only to the proxy server. And you, when you configure the proxy server, he can, uh, sorry, it's the opposite, he can get out and go to the internet. And you reduce the surface of attack to this proxy server, let me strength this proxy server with host intrusion detection tool and so on. And you will see it talk about web firewall and so on. So you can also make single signal solution. If you want to, you know, all know that people, they have various passwords, they put them and it's uh, very visible in their desks. So having only one password to access the various, you know, server and so on in the institution is better. We have Shiverlos, which is very good. This is a tool we permit to implement that. They offer API also for your own application, but they can use the same. This is a toolkit. Case from Yale University also provides very good uh, protocol for security application. So you can also uh, go to SSO solution inside your institution, a step-by-step, -step, of course. Here we will show you the variety of tools, the richness, but of course, I mean, when you start, when you go, you will see how easy and how far. Concern on antivirus on the spam, that's uh, maybe the, uh, the disadvantages, but in open source, uh, there is one of the best antivirus engine which was acquired by Cisco in 2013, but still open source. It's a very good uh, antivirus engine which evolved with Cisco also and still open source. It's the basis of a lot of antivirus solution. Uh, we, and we have, we have another book back, sorry, which permit to also uh, protect against adverse specific sorry, APT. You can implement customized enterprise and site specific detection and remediation solution with ISO back. ISO back. They have only problem to, uh, with the tools. But, but the problem is we have also other solution for taxation, which uh, most of the uh, antivirus solution are, are based on claim uh, engine. But those solution only the problem that we have is sometimes they have free work and sometimes they have less rich signature than commercial one. Of course, commercial solutions have big task force because what mean antivirus is to record the maximum of virus signature but in real time every day and to update your antivirus so that your antivirus will update and discover the new discovered virus. In open source, there are not enough money to establish big task force. But still, they protect against the biggest virus, the biggest attack. And believe me, for commercial guys, when you see the number of virus discovered every day, there is a point of acceleration if it's not a way to continue to be the best. And, uh, Anyway, I will not go to you know, other hypothesis. The problem also is they have no central administration for those tools. So there is no limitation in open source solution. Still, uh, have, uh, you can have a commercial version free of charge for domestic use, which are not also with no central administration, but with fresh signature, normally they not should be used for professional purpose, only for domestic user, but 
concerned about the spam. The best anti spam are, are, are open source. So, spam is very well known, it's used by a lot for ISP for controlling spam and reducing spam. The value is fitting for spam detection, uh, Bayesian filtering, pressure checks on Bayesian. The, all the techniques are implemented inside those tools. You have to also HSP, which is uh, anti spam, plus an antivirus gateway uh, that can start at the front end of your network. But uh, all we know that uh, you delay a little bit HTTP access, and that's not always very good. Amabis and so on. But spam as I say, the best, which could have concerned email. You have also tools for encryption of communication and also uh, encryption of uh, storage on disks. So you you know new privacy guard new PG what uh, is uh, an open source tool the best can use uh, and uh, when you become a third uh, it's normally this is concern emails you can encrypt email you can sign them that people also know the mail is coming from you and this is uh, mandatory for CSIRT when we discuss with our CSIRT that I'll be sure that the mail comes from you and it's not made by a hacker to uh, send me false information and so on. This uh, includes by itself a little PK managers concern you know, the management of the certificate of the key of encryption for your emails. There is a version for Windows, it's Windows version of GPG for we, which is also can be used on Windows platform. Now, a lot, most of the tools are also used on Windows platform. The part server is now and stay in Linux because it's more reliable, it's more clean. But the forward station, we have also version forward station on Windows. This collection tool there is a lot. I uh, give you two, but uh, VeraCrypt, for example, which is based on TrueCrypt, was very famous. And it's difficult. And we don't know why has been abruptly ended in 2004. Various hypotheses about that, but uh, the action of the open source uh, community is to take it and to go further and to reduce VeraCrypt, which now is uh, up to date and very efficient. You have also this character. This will permit you to form you know, uh, confidential information to have them encrypted on your disk. So all what concern investigation and incident and so on has to be always encrypted to avoid any uh, infringement to the confidentiality of the declaration of people and their logs and so on, internal information. <laughs> But there is a solution also uh, open VPN uh, for spam of uh, so oh, Professor Rubiel, you sound very <laughs> far away again. Oh. Is it better because you are using the mic or that I think I'm. Uh, I, can okay. I can hear I'm you too. now, yeah. You have IPsec or SSL, you know, VPN solution. VPN solution means you will uh, make, you know, tunnels that will move another network. And you permit also your client VPN to your people that they will uh, interact with you from outside. I don't know if you hear that, but Mr. Nabil, your voice is so far. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I probably not my PC or maybe it changed after that. Is it more clear? You still sound very far, like very, very far. Uh, keep talking. Test one, two, three. Uh, it's better when you it, it goes in and out. You start you start louder, but then it fades. I will start recording on his phone. Maybe, uh, maybe you. better. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody, for your patience. Maybe I will try to.
anyway, so you have VPN solution that you can install at the level of uh, frontier of your network, and you can give VPN client, you know, there are people that they can uh, another, you know, that they can, when they can have to enter your network, they can come the VPN, so there is no interception of their communication with your with your internal network. So we have a solution, IPsec, SSL, and we label VPN client. Of course, you, all of you, you know uh, SSH uh, it permits uh, reliable remote administration of server and so on from the inside network. Protection of the uh, Cecil public web server. Thank you. Another mix value. Is it better? It's a little bit better. Keep talking for me, please. It's okay. No, it's okay. So uh, you, you better hear me now. <laughs> yes, we can hear you now. <laughs> yeah, I will try to keep my mouth on the mic. That's the only solution. I yeah, technology. Thank you, Professor Nabil. Yeah, Apologies for interrupting. Now it's, it's a new PC, and I suspect there is a new problem. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> so the for protection of the, your web server. You are not common. I have not a common web server. It has to be very strongly protected. As I told you, hackers will try as a challenge to try to you know to uh, attack your your server, all your, your external you know resources, and mainly the web server. So for that, now I have a problem with my PowerPoint, not with my micro. I saw it. Sorry, really sorry for this logistic problem. I have to cut. Let's come back to you. Oh. So I will stay. Uh, I don't know if you see well the slide. Is it okay? Oh, let me return when when I yes, can. Okay, okay. Yeah, this looks fine. Okay, so I maybe go through that. So now the protection of the SIT web server. You have uh, what you have to install, but here I have an animation. I have surely to come back to full screen because there is a little animation. Oh no, I haven't. So sorry. Anyway, what you do is to hide your web server. Here's this, this is your web server. But what you should do is not to expose it directly to the internet guys. We put a reverse proxy. In fact, guys from outside enter this server reverse proxy, and this reverse proxy will, and do you know, contact the web server. So we make, you know, uh, as a distinction, and we hide our web server from outside. Here, we'll install what we call WAF, Web Firewall, which uh, it's like it needs, in fact, the screw the content of uh, HTTP, you know, code and see if there is a tentative of attacks and he can stop them. After that, it came to reverse proxy to take if also it go inside that only the reverse proxy will contact the web server, get the answer and give you the answer back to the client. So this is the way to strength your server protection to be sure you have put frontiers and you have other frontiers that for intruder. When they attack, in fact, they attack the reverse proxy and don't see your observer. And you can react and strength at that level. So for that, we have also very good solution from the open source field, mod security, which uh, a very good WAF, what we call WAF, Web Firewall, is uh, real time backlash lookup. He see a tentative of HTTP denial of servers, you know, attack and generic one. 
uh, detect error which come from your observer and hide them. You can hide, you know, vulnerability of your observer that they are well protected. And the community offer you also consult to treat with WAF, FLE, which can protect you better. It's a phenomenon bad. IRNB is another sensor intended for real time monitoring, which is also a good tool, but mode security is more well known, and more used. And you have various open source kit for HTTPS based on various library. For example, mode SSL is based on SSL lay, you know, library of encryption. Uh, Apache SSL is based on open SSL library of encryption. So various solution to have the choice to make the one more accommodated to your need or to your belief. Uh, we have also now for sensitive server, we should install, you know, special operating system, let's say secure operating system. So for that, we have various solutions from the options files like Linux V server, which permit that you isolate, you know, your environment. If there is an attack on a process, he can go and spread to all your system. He's contained in its zone. So he better protect your server because you have various services. Some can be sensitive, like a source of attack and Tudor can hack them, but he cannot and make rootkit to enter the whole system. Cube OS is another solution. It's not a multi-user system only, but he isolates various environments, permitting that an attack doesn't spread inside the server. SE Linux from NSA and Red Hat also provide a very good uh, system based also on monetary access control of DOT. And, uh, but it's difficult to, uh, to configure, but the reaction of the open source community, App Armor, which include the learning mode which permit you to easily configure it as your Linux, you know, operating system. So for sensitive server, you should install those secure operating system. And also, as we said, for the web server, for example, or what is in the surface attack should be uh, better protected against attack and against expert attacks. Uh, in virtualized platform, you have the choice also, not only VM, uh, you have uh, type one hypervisor or type two hypervisor. VirtualBox, for example, from Oracle, which is still open source. Run on virus, you can install, uh, run on Linux, on uh, Windows, on Mac, and he can permit you to have uh, the relation environment very easily. Then, very well known, is an open source type one hypervisor. This run directly on the host's hardware. And he permitted to have various senses of operating system. And uh, he's used, for example, with Amazon Web Services, with Rackspace hosting, very zone. As you see, uh, you know, big institution give confidence to open source product because they sense the interest of the system and the quality of them. And layer also security, because when we have the code source open and seen, uh, believe me, it's better than they have, as I told before, be blind about what's going on inside the commercial, you know, closed uh, source code. So, and much, much more for the open source. If you have need network attached storage or SAN, who have open source solution uh, offered, so open the free NAS, for example, and there is another commercial one, but still full open source support thread. Just for letting the spirit of responsibility in the open source community, uh, open filler. When the author discovers that there is vulnerability, there is hole in the product, they by themselves publish that to people do not give confidence to their own tool, you know? Because that's just what you find in open source. You never find the commercial tools, of course, due to the economic impact on the company. But in open source, you know, those are philanthropic guys who try to make the best. And when they discover they make error, they don't hesitate to declare it to the community. And the author, in fact, in 2013 say, hey, guys, we have some holes that we cannot remediate. So please stop using our tools and development stopped fully in 2000, 
2015. That's another example of the responsibility of the open source community. If you need video control solution, you have iSpy, you know, for PCs on mine that can, uh, also can be used for large corporation and also integrate CCTV, you know, unit if you want, uh, and of course security camera, and with a very good uh, graphic interface functionality and so on. As you see, a lot, a lot, a lot of tools, and you are not stopped by budget consonant, you are stopped by heavy acquisition procedure and so on. We, it's only leave to your creativity. And believe me, when you put your guys there and you put yourself there, uh, you saw a little bit the interface, the quality, you know, like uh, playing, you know. What is more is now you are, if you master those tools and this is, uh, you can deliver more CCTV service. As I said before, can provide immediate assistance for a constituency in rapidly deploying, uh, uh, sensing the security architecture, installing them, you know, open source solution until if they want, they can sell commercial products. Or when they discover the beautiful, this, those beautiful tools, they will stay there. They stay there, but please don't go to offer training and assistance. Let it made by young private guys who will, and then you create jobs, you create, uh, you know, skills inside your country. And uh, uh, that's a step when people start making training and open source and making assistance to users that install the open source solution. They can rapidly go to also to search and development activity easily by customizing for some uh, users, by combining tools, and they will go to really create new tools. So please leave that to the community, to your young guys, young engineers that they work. With. But when you do it, you install, you open the market for them. So I think we, we've finished now concerning securing your internal architecture and uh, we'll go a little bit to how to try it on our concerning cyberspace. It will uh, be of interest for CECIRT guys, national CECIRT guys, but for all, all of you. Huh? So how to install a monitoring system of cyberspace, how those HoneyNet system and also artifact analysis labs. Concerning cyberspace monitoring system, it's important for national CECIRT to not be blind in case of an attack is going on on the national cyberspace. So have to install your monitoring system to be immediately alerted if there is an attack starting or going on in the cyberspace, not inside now. We are no more talking about the inside network. And for that, what can be done is to install, you know, agent to install needs, for example, uh, we'll see various solution going uh, to complexity, but here we come to corporate network, you know, your national uh, computer center and so on, or what sensitive or not sensitive corporate network, we install at their frontier, uh, at the level of the external router, let's say. Here the sensor, when we can install solution, uh, intrusion detection tools, or uh, uh, network monitoring tools in case of DDoS, and we connect them to secure connection to the CCIRT SOC. So if an attack is going on on those corporate network or telecom network, uh, operator network or the ISP uh, network, we are immediately, you know, alerted about that. And we know that an attack, big mass attack, of course, those tools are not destined to protect those. Uh, and you have to explain them. It's just to have a monitoring tool when we detect mass attack. It's not your job to protect them, but your job to see if the cyberspace is under attacks, is in a bad situation. So those uh, cyberspace monitoring system, we can call them CSMS briefly. Uh, you have tools from 
the open source uh, like Snowbee, which is a simple cyber sense monitoring system when you can install NIPS, NIPS, what we explained, it's not Suricat or Sagan at the level of those frontiers, the frontier of those, you know, sensitive network. And immediately if an attack <clears throat> is going on, you can go and see what's going on inside uh, remotely from your SOC and inspect if there is an attack going on. This is a very easy tool to install and to use. Another tools richer, in fact, is the Security Onion, which install needs, but install uh, various open needs, but uh, in SEM, you know, Network Security Manager, you can better see DDoS attacks flow growing at the level of network. So you will discover you have a distributed DDoS attack going on on your cyberspace. He integrated a lot of tools that can permit you to not be blind of a case of an attack going on in your cyberspace. Mondo will uh, show you uh, this little tool, but uh, Security Onion, in fact, and you'll make a demo of that to show you a little bit the, how easy it's to use those kind of tools. Mondo, are you there? Okay. Thank you. I will stop my Can sharing. I, okay. I will uh, just uh, start with uh, the presentation of uh, Seher, uh, Mr. Nabil. Okay, go ahead. We, we have time. Explain them. Uh, Onion, it's easy to say a little bit more. Uh, just, yeah, yes, okay, okay. Uh, I will share my screen. And, th and then we'll make a demo of Seher. So we make a demo of Seher. But that's to, to show the guys how easy is uh, how easy is to use those and the correct quality. So f first of all, I will show you uh, Seher, which is a cyber threat uh, monitoring system, which is uh, developed by our uh, ASAC team, information sharing and analysis team, and uh, which is based on uh, uh, so open source tools. Here, the first interface is the single sign-on uh, Lemon LDAP uh, solution, which is uh, open source. After log into the interface, we have all uh, uh, tools. We, we can see here uh, the dashboard, the threat intelligence tools, uh, the resources, uh, the common resources, the sensor monitoring, uh, which is implemented on the uh, ISP, the internet service provider, and uh, the uh, uh, operator uh, telecom. Uh, we can choose the Seher IP manager, which is the local who is for the National Agency for Computer Security or for uh, TwinCert. Here are all the IP uh, range of our cyberspace. It's very important. Here are the dashboard of vulnerability detected and uh, declared for uh, uh, for our partners. There is also a dashboard for uh, vulnerability related to the critical infrastructure information protection, the CNI or the, uh, the critical national uh, infrastructure. We can see all vulnerability categorized by uh, IP or by uh, sector. We can see here also Zabbix, which is uh, used for uh, passive uh, monitoring. Here we can put all the website or, uh, or government website on our space to, uh, to, to detect uh, the av availability of uh, this uh, website. There is also CyberChef. There is also the, the attack uh, navigator, which implement the tactic techniques and the procedure of the threat actors. Uh, the Hive for case uh, management. There is also a MISP, the malware information sharing uh, threat platform. Uh, there is also the common resources uh, here, the intranet and the, the next cloud, which is uh, an open source to, uh, to, to share uh, the document between uh, CSER team and the SOC and the Isaac team. And there is also a services for who is. 
we just need to put the IP here and show uh, the, the, the ISP of this IP. There is here uh, the Mattermost for uh, chat. And now I will show you the, the graphical user interface of uh, Security Onion. It uh, contains uh, a multiple uh, tools like uh, Kibana for dashboard, Grafana also, CyberChef. We can uh, create a playbook for uh, a multiple uh, type of attacks. We can, we, we, he, uh, it implements also the Hive and the attack navigator. Uh, this is just an example of uh, sensor security onion and how we, uh, here we see the alerts generated when uh, the attack or when uh, we have uh, an attack on our networks. It implements a lot of tools like Suricata, like uh, uh, HashEDS host uh, intrusion detection system, uh, OSEC. And uh, so I will stop here to not unpack the time of my colleagues and uh, we can assist you later or uh, in uh, the, the next workshop uh, in the next uh, week to, uh, to, uh, to implement this framework and uh, to implement uh, all uh, these open source uh, tools. So thank you and uh, Mr. Nabil, the floor is yours. Thank you, Amanda. We can uh, go, if you want to post question, please raise your hand. Or we can uh, make us uh, just before the, uh, I don't know when you, we left two hours, when we uh, maybe let you uh, rest a little bit for how much time, but I, I'll just finish this part and then we can maybe make a break if you want. So, but not hesitate to raise your hand in case you need to have question or to just send them by the QA, QND, you know, tools. So, uh, like other problem, uh, sorry, I don't know. It's, uh, I think it stuff. Sorry for that. I'll take the mic on my mouth again. <laughs> That's Microsoft, no? <laughs> so, uh, what explained a little bit, uh, Munder and uh, Seher. Seher is a Tinset system for monitoring cyberspace security of the Tunisian cyberspace. It's CMS tools, but which integrate also correlation of incident log to permit automatic alert in case there is an attack going on. Uh, but with Onion, you have to go, you know, from sensor to sensor and see what's in going on. What we need is a system that correlates what's going on around the various sensor and uh, adding other uh, threat, you know, uh, information uh, sources to try to automatically alert the operator at the seat, you know, so if there, has, there is an attack, a big attack, mass attack going on starting. He also has explained rapidly, Mondo integrate feeds from other Transfer International Threat Intelligence Platform and HoneyNet system, the national HoneyNet system, but other also HoneyNet system from France. So uh, it's important this correlation between various models of Seher, which Seher web, which control the web, web defacement and so on, and automatically will alert if there is a defacement uh, or tentative of defacement for observer. Also the important, you know, internet infrastructure server, DNS and so on. Sorry? I'm, I'm not yeah. hearing you. I'm not hearing you now. I have problem of. Uh... Go ahead, uh, Asinabil. Go ahead. It's okay. 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 Thanks. So uh, the, the sensor that we say the honey nets try to make correlation and to alert. 
So Seher is installed at the level of, uh, you know, uh, some PC, uh, but a little powerful, depending on the size of the network that we are supervising. And he uh, see what's going on. Uh, trace of, uh, you know, tentative of intrusion uh, by the uh, IDS, by the needs, or flow going up, meaning the DOS attack is going on, and other little... Uh, things and he, he send them automatically to the SOC, to the server, server, server at UNSERT. So as we said, various we uh, can take from the community also alert coming on and from uh, our system of internal supervision of the cyberspace and correlate them and try to put it to the incident team and to automatically alert from mass attack on the Tunisian cyberspace. So we have situational awareness about what's going on inside our cyberspace. And it's very important for you, if, especially if you, of course, if you are a national CCIT, to implement this kind of thing, to not be blind of thing going on on your cyberspace. So what is as explained the uh, uh, Munda from Zone 8, from Team Kimuru, from Fish Tank, from other uh, Honeynet project, Shadow Server, and so on, that we try to be informed what's going on at the international level also. Uh, first demo was made a little bit by uh, uh, Mondo anyway. Uh, we can, uh, as I told you, and make special demo of the system in special training you know, session if you want, if you are interested. Well, now concerning Honeynet infrastructure. Honeynet will permit you to not to try to capture sample of threats, bots, or payloads, and so on in your cyberspace. It's not a CM SMS. It's not a system for monitoring security of the cyberspace because it will only at uh, capture, you know, uh, threat, but it doesn't give you a good vision of what's going on, on on your cyberspace. For example, DDoS attack. You can never solve them with Honeynet infrastructure. Some people pretend that Honeynet permits supervision of the security of cyberspace. Believe me, it's not. And don't do this, uh, this error. But as you saw, when well, there is simple tool, to make it easier for you to supervise the security of your cyberspace. So HoneyNet, what's HoneyNet? HoneyNet, in fact, will emulate virtual, virtual vulnerable machine and server, so network. Normally, you should put it in an isolated network. Don't please put it like that. Don't put it on your firewall connected to your infrastructure. Because HoneyNet, as their name is, is HoneyNet, they attract, also attacks from hackers. And a lot of hackers, when they saw that, there is hole they can use to know, introduce themselves inside your network going through the HoneyNet. It's preferable to make it an isolated network and not with your uh, space of IP address that you don't put them into challenge. And normally you should, uh, in any country, you have dirty IP address. IP address of people who are not well protected, or there is a big infection of form and so on and so on. And normally they are well known, and you have to manage those to attract the most of let's say, kind of virus, of worm, of bots, of scripts, and to try to discover. It's a, a good tool, in fact, also for, let's say, the confidence of your constituency. When we discover bot in an institution and you tell them we discovered this bot, uh, oh, those guys uh, have good, you know, uh level of security and they are helping us sometimes it's a way of marketing of the CCIT. and of course you discover what kind of form of uh, script and so on are, uh, are in your cyberspace not all that's the problem but uh, the less you discover the better you are and you better can inform your constituency if they are infected by specific bots 
especially. So for that to have various solution, low interaction honey net system or high interaction honey net system. So for the CC, it's better with low interaction honey net cell, but it's a dispute and intelligent detection system. In fact, it's client server approach, surface net IDS, which permit you to a little bit um, monitor your honey net in a very efficient way. And it's in a very good open source solution, easy to, to, uh, to, to install and to manage. We have a lot of, uh, because honey net, what mean? We, we put, uh, you know, uh, uh, tools for SMTTP, for example, can analyze uh, malicious email. Other we try to log brute force attack. Uh, although we, uh, we try a little bit to ver emulate vulnerability and try to capture warm. Uh, other specialized in web application. All those can be installed on the HoneyNet, SurfaceNet, uh, uh, the HoneyNet system. And much more, you know, kids from all of those are from the source, the open source community uh, field. You can go to high interaction honey pot, uh, honey nets. This is if you are interested a little bit to make, you know, a supervision of uh, active attack. It's uh, you have more interaction with the attacker and you can try to capture its activity. And if it's not always no, much more the time, not feasible to the trace from where he is trying to attack. As you know, attacker does not attack you directly from the PC. Huh? They will go through various proxy to hide their origin. But um, if you, with this interaction, you can have time a little bit to try to, try to the trace, but not easy. Huh? So you have various solution uh, and you can install so any net uh, for your cyberspace, low interaction, in fact, the uh, solution is better, so self ADS. You can install also an artifact analysis laboratory if you, you need to, first you have to start low, but uh, step by step, you will be interested to capture via the honey net, if you capture artifact, artifact mean malicious code, uh, worm or script of attacks, you can, after that, make their analysis start doing that this is important for very critical national you know network or application because those network or those applications will be at attacked by very skilled people and not people army in fact as you know now we are at the time of uh, uh, cyber war and any army in the world has now its team the APT, famous APT teams, Russia and so on. And for critical, you know, uh, network and information system, they can try to introduce that for espionage or for also when needed sabotage. So sometimes step by step, you have to go to artifact analysis, make it as a, a joke first and step by step, uh, people can go to there and reverse engineering and such kind of little bit heavy activity, but mainly it requires collaboration from editor of software, which as for our country is more difficult than it will be in the US or in France or things when they have good relation with software editor to discover a zero day. Uh, if there are any you know, problem in their solution, not yet declare it, for example. But you can start doing that with uh, tools like Cuckoo, which permit you to make a sandbox to put what you capture it through the honey net and you put it like inside the lab. And you can see to understand how the artifact operates, uh, what he call his window IP, what copy of file he create or delete from your file system, make a damp of a memory. So you will discover a little bit uh, the techniques used by the artifact, by the malicious code and artifact, and what is his goal or motivation, because a lot of artifact doesn't react or act immediately especially if they are destined 
to uh, you know operate sabotage it will be done at the instant t when the who installed them will give the order and i don't know if you heard but a lot of things that happened around the world and we have very critical things that uh, happened in some critical infrastructure uh, now we are talking about nuclear cyber bomb what was discovered recently in uh, arab saudia is uh, they were able to really uh, make you know human uh, loss and maybe uh, thousand of uh, life can be lost because they enter the uh, chemical uh, uh, factory and they disable all system that can be activated in case there was a problem in the uh, inside the factory and so if some uh, they were able also to make that incident and then we, uh, the guys there will not be able to stop it. So as it happened in India, as you remember, you know, there will be chemical stuff going on uh, and uh, people can be, can die with that. So sometimes we, now we are in an era which is cyber security become very, very critical, very sensitive for national security. And uh, uh, the artifact, the malicious code they will use for those kind of activity are not discovered by any antivirus, of course. Mm. So a little bit to have uh, skills starting and uh, protecting very critical, you know, process or information system or especially critical infrastructure the company of electricity, the company, because an attack, when he, he go to the company of electricity, you know, in our country, can uh, we have social, you know, perturbation can happen behind, and so on and so on. So to start a little bit, you have various tools, eh? zero wine, uh, all of them are sent mixed. You put the artifact, the malicious cause inside box, and you can analyze uh, what he's tried to do, what he do, uh, make trace of that, and what uh, is intent and what is, uh, let's say, capacity. Here it has to be coupled by reverse engineering, which requests more time and more skills, but can be done, and you can specialize one of two guys to go further to that and to be able to make also uh, reverse engineering and uh, have the code back and see really what is inside the malicious code. As I told you, uh, bad uh, things will happen when they are activated uh, by remotely or by, you know, covered channel. There's various techniques, very difficult to discover and to stop. So to start, not bad. You can also by yourself uh, try to improve your skills in creating and uh, your ex exploit yourself. There is Metasploit, which uh, community, which is the source framework of uh, Metasploit. There is a commercial version, but there is community version, which is uh, comparable. There is uh, some add-on in the commercial one, the open core, in fact, not really commercial. Uh, and they permit you to write script of exploit to test them and to be able to also understand the other side bad side how they are doing also uh, it's a, it's a way that is open source, source for that so now i mean, we maybe if you want to make a break for you uh, because going now we will go how to implement your information system with open source tool, how you generate your mailing list, you know, security mailing list easily. Uh, Mabruk will show you that. And after that, how you do forensics investigation and forensics activity. But first, see the system that you have start to make your job easier, ticketing system, and those system for generating the, uh, the mailing list. Last, uh, I mean, we'll show you how tools, how to investigate and make forensics easily with open source solution. Implementing now information system. 
And there, first of all, there is the incident handling process. So you have to install an incident tracking system, what is called ITS, which will permit you to handle all the declaration of you know incident and to put them into a, a clear you know process which is the process in fact that is requested if you want as a CCL to be in first people will come audit if you are respecting a little bit the process of incident handling those kind of system will permit you to put them into action easily and uh, for that, there is various tool. So Hatem Mohand Ali will present JLP waiting for him. There is a demo. There is, uh, for example, RTR, which is uh, an open source ITS make purposely for CCIRT. Uh, you can use it if by TFC CERT. He process the, uh, he implement the process of incentive handling. Well, uh, people, you know, this there is interesting characteristic, but I don't know uh, why people uh, more uh, use OTRS, which is uh, the community edition. Uh, they are more rich. Mohammed Ali came by its interface, by its GUI. Mohammed Ali will. Uh, will uh, show you GLP. GLP so uh, there is various ticketing system that exists and uh, you, you know it's uh of uh, management offenses and whatever they are that's GLP is uh, you uh, they use a tune server and amended version so it's a normal system for information source. It's an information source manager. It's ITL compliant. There is a lot of rich functionality for incident handling management, and especially for technical also knowledge sharing. It's very important at the start of CC that people share, you know, they experience what they did uh, when uh, they handle incidents and this uh, make more interaction between the uh, staff of the CCIRT and the enrichment of their knowledge of their skills. There is a good knowledge by sharing uh, inside JLP that permit that. Of course, there is ticket, or what we call ticket, when you have an incident, you have to create a ticket to follow the incident, all the phases by which the incident go through. This can be made automatically also by email. If you have a CCT mail, you know, that people can declare incident. GLP can automatically feed them inside the system. And they, they'll be handled by a first guy who see what if it's a serious incident, then he will decide to affect it to a T, a member of the team of incident handling, and to follow up what's going on through the incident resolution. So those tick tick system permit to handle a lot of incident in the most smooth way and making uh, say tracking of the incident report, assignment of incident, handling of access of validation, and uh, send email of response to the client to the situation about what is going on, requesting from them in a secure way. So it's very important for the incident handling team to have such system and to implement the good process of processing of an incident, of treatment of an incident by its various phase. We have not the time to go uh, in detail in that, but that's one of system and Mohand Ali will show you its characteristic. Maybe I will give the head to Mohand Ali, <laughs> hope he finishes. <laughs> uh, so Mohand Ali, please go. Yeah. Speak. Well, there is the time and Mohand Ali boot his uh, PC. We have problem of PC. We have uh, we should have uh, here intrusion. We are at NC. You know? <laughs> so, uh, sir, Mr. Nabil. Yeah, go ahead, Hossein. Okay, 
if I, ca I can add uh, something, uh, this Go tool ahead. is uh, presented by uh, by uh, by you. It can be uh, reach uh, the approach zero trust architecture. You can with this uh, tools reach uh, the zero trust architecture. It's what demand by NIST by all uh, standards and uh, all compliance needed now to uh, migrate the classical architecture where the zero trust uh, architecture. Yes, it's a, a paradigm that uh, should be a little bit, uh, you know, searched by C third. Since you are the guy, the most secure, you know, so we need that. Yes. So Mohandali will uh, go through GLPE uh, once he's ready, <laughs> and uh, after that he will show you Taranis, which is the tool how to generate your mailing list easily you know, to collect alerts from various mailing lists and also from also your local team, you know, discovery of uh, events or things. And we can generate to the constituency, you know, uh, alert about vulnerability discovered or alert about the warm discovery by Seher or attack uh, going on if we decide to make it uh, public, you know, because a lot of incidents, you have to keep them confidential until sometimes when you decide that you should have a press, you know, guys who can talk with the press to well explain what's going on and uh, not to make people too frightened or uh, and so on. So, Mohandali uh -huh. is not ready. <laughs> <laughs> we have those problem. So I continue talking. Uh, so this is important, especially I know that a lot of you want to be uh, first uh, to go to the first accreditation, you know, membership, not accreditation. And uh, for example, first uh, they uh, ask that uh, France is it come and make your audit assessment. And the assessment consists to see if you are implementing the correct process of incident handling mainly. Those kinds of systems will permit you to implement them efficiently and that this will continue in time. And of course, you have the first little team of incident handling, but you will go. And also, if there are little team, like I told you, uh, sharing of information between them is very important and also for the chief of the incident handling team he has to make a correct follow-up of uh, uh, incident resolution and inform the client of what is going on and an incident can sometimes take time to really uh, be resolved after maybe artifact analysis if well. but uh, you know more investigation to find the source of the attack and what was made and, and so on and so on. So uh, installing those kind of system will permit you to uh, uh, go through the good uh, cycle of processing of incident and also minor incident that we discard sometimes have to be put on the system to see if there is a recurrence, if there is after correlation between little incident that can show that there is activity, malicious activity coming on or made espionage and so on, on some uh, client of the CCS. So, Mohandari. In our case, uh, like I told you, uh, if you need more specific training, please ask and uh, we'll have the time today. It's just to show you the capability of the open source tools that are available and that it's awareness session. And uh, don't hesitate to go. You will see how beautiful is uh, this kind of tool. You can just download, just install, play with and uh, step by step you will see your efficiency or mastering of the tool growing. That is training session and that you can go 
to the risk friend that can train you and so on and so on. All the potentiality exists. If you have questions, guys, also through the QR, uh, please post. Or if you want to post a question, don't hesitate. Also in French, eh? we don't have any problem to understand the French. We prefer to speak in English. Mr. Nabil. Yes, yeah, uh, please. Citrac, Citrac have a question. He yeah. says, for, say for example, if we have an attack in our organization, can we demand your help? If yes, how? Okay, I, I think uh, I'm saying a consistent that you search on African answer, but I'm sure guys will be happy to help you. Uh, you know, it's a, it's the duty of the to collaborate. That's any CSIRT, any CERT. And especially concerning uh, CERT, you will find the most uh, help you can uh, imagine. We uh, we did it in the past, and we have our proof about that. We uh, helped the guy, uh, our guys from uh, uh, from uh, from South Africa. You know, then we wanted to establish a cert long time ago. A lot of uh, uh, country. We uh, we also did i think a good job with nigeria with our friend from nigeria when just a i will say a we were uh, first in the field that's it and but people now uh, can be more more let's say skilled than us so don't hesitate if you need any assistance that people will be happy to help you collaboration south south is the key uh, but not not south north and also south south sometimes we know our problem, our level, and we can help efficiently. So I think uh, if there is other questions, uh, I was seeing the QR, not the discussion, not the chat. Uh, uh, hey, uh, Mr. Nabil, he said yeah. how, he said how to uh, help, uh, to help uh, uh, this organization, the process. The, the, the what? Uh, I, I will see uh, because I, I want to stick it on my micro. I don't see. Uh, <laughs> yes. Let me see uh, how how just uh, just uh, we will put you the address email of the guys or of my uh, my address email. I can intervene. Just uh, send us an email. Send us an email, and uh, we'll try to see how we can uh, we can help you. But I'm not so operational at the level of uh, TuneCert, but uh, of course I still, uh, I'm the old guy and the father, <laughs> but we come, I say people, but this is my, <laughs> still there. So ju just send an email, uh, I will give you, uh, if you want, uh, from now that it's no amazing list, uh, event, event at nc.an, for example, will be dedicated uh, for this training. So don't hesitate to send your email to ask for training or, or ask for other things for support or thing like that. And after that, we give you other email and uh, that you can use in a more secure way. So, oh, I think Mohamed Ali is ready. But if there's a question, please don't hesitate. Now I will go to rest a little bit. <laughs> I better be here. So Mohamed Ali, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Nabil. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's see together how to inform your constituent about uh, incident uh, within uh, GLP. So, uh, in uh, insert, uh, we have the monitoring uh, agent after uh, uh, check the uh, intrusion event within SER, uh, he will. Uh, create a constituent uh, about that. So we have to log, for example, like that. And... <clears throat> okay, he moved to the menu, assistance, tickets. And now we have to create a new ticket by click on the plus uh, icon. Mm -hmm. 
So as you can see on the, on the screen, uh, this is uh, the open date of the tickets. So the type, it is a transit. So the uh, monitoring agent should be sure that is a uh, uh, incident not an uh, event uh, to avoid uh, to declare or inform about uh, false positive uh, incident. So we have to choose the category of the incident. So you can see on screen the list of the, the incident, uh, malicious code, botnet, information collecting. There is a hacker that is doing some scans. Uh, if the uh, critical uh, service is out of, uh, out of service, phishing, for example, intrusion or web, uh, website defacement, uh, but ransomware. So you can list uh, all the, uh, the category of incident. Uh, within uh, Taranis. So uh, for uh, the, this example, I uh, have to, I choose to, to choose the uh, scan, scan incident. So uh, I have to choose, for example, if you, how to contact your uh, constituency, to choose uh, uh, if uh, yes. So you have to choose your constituent, for example, this is the list of constituent banks, yeah, as you can see on the screen, banks, ISP, uh, critical institution, CEP, uh, many, many uh, uh, type of institution. So I chose to insert, for example, as you can see on the screen, so uh, the email contact of the chief of information security official uh, will be appeared here. So the email, so, uh, and uh, then the status of tickets, so new urgency, so you have to put it in height, request source. So what is the source of information? So I choose uh, from there, uh, urgency high impact, so the high impact and choose approved request. So, uh, all tickets uh, should be approved by the uh, monitoring team leader. So I have to inform my team leader about this ticket. So uh, location uh, field, that's mean the, uh, uh, the activity of the affected, uh, uh, the affected institutions, for example, I chose uh, for example, government institution. So what is the title? So I have to define the scan attempts targeted the email server of, uh, for example, uh, government institution, institution, okay, description. So in description, I have to define the IP source of scan. So uh, for example, uh, this scan, Affected uh, then uh, define the affected uh, server of the IP of the, for example, of the uh, affected email server. So please. Contact us. for investigation. So if I have information about the hacker, I put it in the field the hackers. So then all the fields are completed. I click on the button add. So as you can see here, 
at the bottom left. So the ticket has been registered and they give you the ID of the ticket and the item sets if they added. So then uh, the, uh, the approval will uh, receive an email about that to approve the, the, the ticket. So I log on the approval as an approval. So as you can see on the, on the approval, your ticket to validate this one. So you have, I have a ticket to validate. So the requester is the demo uh, monitoring agent. As I said, that is the description of the ticket. I click on the description. So I have to approve the details and check if the uh, monitoring agent uh, does some uh, mistakes. So I have to correct uh, it. So if all uh, right, so I have to, to approve the ticket. So I'm clicking uh, in this, uh, wait for approval wait for approval, so granted. When I click it saves, so an email, uh, an email will be sent to the, the uh, chief of information security officer to the uh, affected uh, institution. So uh, all K of success, uh, one of K of success of uh, GLP is uh, the statistics. So you can, for example, uh, have to classify or to have uh, how many incidents that you have declared in the, in two, uh, this, is, uh, this is necessary to have uh, for, for the decision makers to put strategy or to make strategy uh, about to reduce the impact of the uh, the incident uh, targeting uh, Tunisian uh, cyberspace. Okay, that's two category. Okay, so this is the category. So I have to, to, to select the show graphic, yes, to display the report as the graphic. So as you can be screen how, how many uh, incidents observed by the monitoring agent. So uh, other uh, success, uh, the key of success of uh, uh, GNPI, uh, GNP is uh, uh, to, uh, to, to order your uh, monitoring staff or incident have uh, uh, staff in groups, for example, uh, monitoring agent uh, included in incident handling level one for the uh, the group of investigation or the involved uh, uh, investigation there is included an incident uh, handling level two. So if uh, in management, so you can, for example, classify your your staff. For, uh, Okay, uh, that's uh, all about the uh, GMP. Okay, Mr. Nabil, uh, you take over. Okay, just back to <laughs> make link between two sides. Of course, uh, uh, Muhammad Ali cannot really go uh, well to all the uh, capability of such tool, how to open a ticket. Ticket, as you understood, is an incident coming uh, through emails or that you manually edit inside the system and to follow, make the follow-up of the various uh, phase of treatment of the incident and get out with the response to the constituency and to eventually 
knowledge base about the incident, how it was resolved, and this serve also in case in the future, if there is repetitive incident to gather them and to make correlation about them and to more understand what's going on if they are think of a specific attack and so on. Or well, maybe uh, what can I do is just to say now one thing very important for CERT is to be visible from the outside, that people know they are caring about their security. It means you have to dispatch, you know, to the broadcast, uh, discovered vulnerability that people patch their system. The best way, you know, uh, to, to protect the constituency and yourself is to patch vulnerability as soon as they are discovered by editor, software editor, Linux, Microsoft, especially, and so on. Or well, Microsoft has their own system of uh, uh, pa patch application and so on, but all the rest of, uh, you know, software editor uh, just about cast they have discovered vulnerability and give the patch how to close this vulnerability. And the role of CSIRT is to immediately inform its constituency about uh, new vulnerability and give them the link, the URL and so on to patch their system easily. And uh, this give you visibility to the community also. But you can also make special you know, mailing this, especially in our country, to just make some awareness about, uh, like, uh, you know, a lot of people are not very aware about what is a virus. And it can happen to you that people confront that with, you know, medical virus. Believe me, it can exist. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm just laughing, but to inform the people what is a virus, how to protect yourself, don't open, you know, uh, an email uh, with an attached, you know, such kind of thing really increase the protection of the cyberspace and uh, a man who is aware about danger is better than any security software tool. The best firewall, in fact, is the awareness of the uh, citizen, of the professional about danger. And then don't do mistake, as you know, most of the new attacks are social engineering attacks. What happened to critical infrastructure or what happened to banks and so on is to send an email, simple email to an employee and he just click on attached file and he infects the whole network. And through that network, they can also, if it's critical infrastructure, it's not really well protected, isolated, they can go through and enter the process, you know, the manufacturing process and can make big, you know, hurt to the critical infrastructure. So awareness is very important and you have to take it into account. And patching is very important because they close the hole uh, by which warm and by which active attack of intruder exploit to spread or to hurt you. So it uh, doesn't underestimate this, you know, for your activity as the national citizen, but also as a private citizen for your constituency. So uh, Mohammed Ali will uh, will show you a tool, Talanis which permit to easily uh, create that service, which, as I told you, is your visibility from the outside. When people don't spread too much, you know, email, regroup vulnerability, so the, too much email means people will not see them. But regroup by criticism. If there is something critical, send immediately. If not, regroup every three days, you know, and then, send them the notification that they found various vulnerabilities, discover various links to how to patch, or if not yet patched, how precautionary measures they should take to prevent uh, until a patch is uh, published by the editor. So please, Mohandari. Okay, thank you again, uh, Professor Nabil. Uh, so uh, we'll come back uh, to the land of the uh, open source tools. So uh, I will present to you uh, 
the Taranis tools. So uh, the case access of Taranis tools is uh, it is uh, all in one uh, alert and wrong uh, solution. So uh, he, uh, the goal of Taranis is to inform your constituent about uh, new vulnerability and new malware and get the information from uh, many sources. So uh, Taranis can deal with the with uh, more than uh, 1,015 uh, source of information. So uh, it's a big deal how to manage this uh, amount of uh, source of information. So uh, let's uh, go, uh, let's, see to, uh, let's see together how to inform constituent about uh, new cyber threats, vulnerabilities, or malware or intrusion. So as a alert and warning manager, I have daily to, to check uh, uh, new vulnerability, new malware. So uh, to check news, so I have to click on the assets uh, tabs, tabulation, so. Assets, as you can see here, this is the pipeline of the collected item. So collected by uh, Taranis. So uh, as you can see here, uh, the, the workflow of Taranis, let's uh, begin from the collector, but the collector is uh, running uh, in uh, background mode. So we are, if you can see the uh, progress of collectors, uh, it is with the Linux uh, command line. And then all, all the work, uh, the rest of the uh, workflow, so by uh, this uh, graphical user interface. So we start with, with assets. So all the item collected by the collector running in background is uh, entered to the assets uh, pipeline. And so, I have to check what is the news. For example, uh, I find out a vulnerability that affect uh, Google Chrome web browser. So uh, I like to use it as uh, an example for uh, writing advisory about this vulnerability. So uh, uh, so if you have to, to view the details of the vulnerability, so I have to, to click on the uh, loop uh, uh, icon. So description is stable has been updated uh, for Windows, Mac, and uh, Linux, which will root over coming days, week. So, okay, I find that this is an, uh, an inter interesting uh, uh, item that uh, will impact uh, my constituents. So I have to inform them quickly to to apply the uh, their patch before uh, the before uh, uh, being attacked so uh, if you can see all the other items so you can send a personal mail to to a colleague to your colleague directly so uh, you have to make the uh, email of your colleague, for example, and set it uh, this article for uh, information. Okay, I selected the receiver, my colleague as a receiver, so I send mail. So any mail will be received to my colleague, as you can see here. I have to wait. Um, okay. So I turn back to the Taranis uh, uh, graphical user interface. Uh, and wait the the article. So I have to to start another, to analyze this item. So to analyze this item, I have to click to the to this button. 
to description command. So uh, as you can see here, uh, Talon is, is able to collect the uh, common vulnerability exposure identifier. So uh, this, this is you can uh, match the regular expression of the common vulnerability uh, uh, exposure. So I have to, to send command to the alert and warning team. So it is to, to publish. So add, add, add command so, and to have to define status branding. That's mean uh, he, uh, this item will be entered in the uh, analysis uh, pipeline rating. So I know that uh, most of my constituents use uh, this web browser. So I rate this item as uh, high. And then I click to the uh, create analysis. So what uh, the uh, alert and warning team do after that? So as a writer, so uh, I advise you when you're using Taranis to separate roles. So you have to alert and warning writer and alert and warning approval and alert and warning uh, publisher. Maybe someone uh, do some mistakes and the other uh, uh, don't uh, correct it. So as a writer, how can we find the, the new item to, to handle? So this one section a bit, Analyze and click to analyze. So this one. Then, if we uh, to find to check the details, analysis details, and to write security advisory related to this uh, item. So you click on uh, this button analysis and then choose create a new advisory. So, and then click to the create button. So as you can see on the screen, the uh, writing uh, tabs, so general, matrix, platforms, products, summary, consequence, description, solution, TLP, number and links. So uh, first of all, we have to define the title. So, multiple vulnerabilities in Google Chrome. So when he uh, check the technical details, you have to define also the damage description. So uh, the vulnerability related of a uh, web browser is to execute uh, arbitrary code using the uh, victim privilege. So damage description that, that, may, that may be the data loss or data theft may be caused or, or, or damage like financial damage or hardware failure or not. So the best shows is to, to data loss or data theft. Then uh, we will go to the uh, matrix steps so to define the impact of the uh, vulnerabilities, we have to, uh, to answer all these questions. This one, uh, this question uh, above is, uh, are related to the probability of uh, to be exploited by a hacker. And the, on the bottom that is to define what is the damage. So as you can see here, so the probability is low or medium high value. Uh, same thing for uh, damage, maybe low, medium, high. So we have to answer all these questions after reading the article related to the vulnerability of... Uh, so if uh, it is the default configuration, so it is no exploit code available, uh, now details available, so fully uh, access required. So it is a physical access or non access or internet access. Maybe the hackers uh, inside the 
uh, by fishing uh, attract the uh, the victim to to visit uh, his fake or malicious website and then execute uh, or he can uh, he can again uh, also he can uh, exploit the vulnerability of uh, if the victim uses a uh, google chrome browser so if the exploitation of the vulnerability require admin or user or not no require for example for his admin privilege so exploit complexity so maybe complex user interaction required so uh, uh, easy so by phishing uh, actively exploited so we have information that uh, uh, this information uh, uh, this is a vulnerability active uh, exploit or not exploit expected no solution available so yes that's about probability uh, then about the damage the, uh, the exploitation of vulnerability cause denial of service no execute arbitrary code uh, yes so you are right for example as you can see the the, the damage change automatically uh, remote rights so no privilege escalation, maybe information leakage. So yes, uh, system information. Uh, yes, data. So when exploiting this vulnerability, hackers can uh, browse the data of his victim. So I think that I will answer to the all of the question. So the uh, impact of these vulnerabilities of probability medium and damage high. So platform, maybe Windows, ah, Windows, Windows rating system. You can see here, uh, Taranis is related to uh, the uh, common product uh, enumeration uh, database. So you can, uh, he uh, automatically import the XML file from the uh, CPE website and import them to the database uh, uh, to, of Taranis and make easy to choose the affected uh, platform. So I have to choose, uh, for example, Windows 8 operating system. Then I move to the product tab. Same thing, so the products, the affected products, which is uh, Google Chrome, uh, Okay, so Google Chrome application. Okay, I select this. So I have to summarize, for example, summarize this vulnerability. So another example, uh, summary demo to move quickly. <laughs> So uh, also uh, consequence, uh, consequence, consequence demo, so description. So I can put, so for example, multiple uh, vulnerabilities has been in Google Chrome web browser. So the exploitation of these vulnerabilities or of these flows. Use old. To execute remote or execute arbitrary arbitrary remotely uh, 
having victim victims Uh, so then I move to the solution. So what is the solution? So to, to watch expected uh, growing using the, the last version. So you have to, then if you apply the, the LP amber, it'll be white, for example, the LP white, because the Google has uh, have published these uh, vulnerabilities to, to uh, all people can uh, review this uh, vulnerability. Uh, links, so we have to put check links. So as you can see, uh, this semi-automatic links. So and then I check if I some uh, fields are missing. So it is okay. Consequence, description, solution, LP white links, and then I have to click save. So then the 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 this advisor uh, enter on the uh, pipeline of of right so as you can see here multiple vulnerability in google chrome so uh, you can edit this item or to if he's uh, finished the writing this advisory he call for ready for for review so as you can see uh, later, you have to separate uh, users' uh, roles. So the writers uh, cannot uh, approve uh, uh, this. I have to log, uh, log on as uh, approval uh, alert and warning users. So uh, sorry for the my internet uh, connection. Some interruption occurred. Okay, approval. So approval. Approval. Then the approval have to check the right pipeline, and then so to check the uh, orange item. So this uh, pending. This one is ready for review, approve it, and uh, publish it. So they have to approve this uh, advisory, advisory. So you have to check, for example, this is a novel review of the advisory that will be sent to, uh, to the constituent. So he check the details if uh, the, uh, the writer uh, some, some mistakes. So if not, okay. so it is uh, okay. So uh, no problem here. So the approval, click on approve uh, button. And then if you can see here, see it is an approved item. Go on the publish uh, pipeline. So as you can see here, that is a new one published in insert advisory email. So then it is uh, then it is the uh, the publisher. I log on the publisher uh, alert and warning user to publish this uh, security advisory. So we have to publish. So, uh, select for Google Chrome, select. So as you can see here in the interface, so I have to select the product if, uh, or so uh, 
maybe you select uh, the concern uh, constituent by platform or by uh, products. So I choose the product selection, then I click to select. So this is the overview of the security advisory to be sent uh, to uh, the constituent. So I, uh, I have, uh, I choose the demo uh, constituent and then click to uh, publish. Yes. So as you can see on the, on the last screen, your message was uh, successfully sent to the following addresses. So this is the, uh, the uh, subscribe to the demo uh, category. So uh, as you can see, this is my Gmail of my Professor Nabil Sahli. So uh, please, uh, the Professor Nabil, check if the uh, if this, uh, security advisory reached to you. I will, and I'm sure she, it will. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Mohamed Ali. And as we told you, if you need more training, you just send an email. We give you, we'll send you the, the copy of the slide, and you have the address email, and you can send to event at NC Point yeah. As I told there on the slide, you want to put me copy to make the follow up with the guys. And uh, now we'll move. Uh, uh, come on, slide, didn't you? We'll move to uh, no, the last but not least part, what concerns open source and free tools for investigation and forensic activity. It will be done by uh, our friend, uh, our, our, my son also, I would say, he's hearing me. Uh, I mean, Rashid, I mean, Rashid now is part of the uh, Tunisian CC.TN with Haitham that uh, some of you know. Uh, they are all guys from ANSI which made this very successful and great CCIT private, but they are still philanthropic. If you have any problem, any inquiry, you can ask them. They are always with the same spirit of ANSI to help also without uh, real commercial return. So we'll move for a very important side of uh, things what concerns CCIT, how to use open source tool to do, investigate about an incident and make forensics. This will be made by, I mean, I mean, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here, I'm I just, mean, uh, do you hear me? Hello? I mean, Rashid, he, 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 yeah, he's speaking, but uh, we are not hearing, uh, sorry, sorry, I I put to not equal ah, with no. Muhammad Ali. Okay, okay, okay. you are there. Uh, so now you hear me, okay, good, good, good. Okay, that, guys, that, you I, have the, I, uh, the power. Go on. Um, just a little bit to find um, how to share the correct screen. Is that okay now? Yeah, go there. Go ahead. Okay, excellent. So, um, thank you, Mr. Nadir. Thank you uh, for this presentation. So. Uh, uh, not yet, no, no, not yet. I mean, uh, we don't see your slides. Yeah, we don't see your slides. I'm sure like a kind of battery or a tariff. I have done bad. Okay, okay. Now it's okay. Okay. So, um, thank you very much, Mr. Nabi, for the presentation. So, now we move directly to uh, the open source and free tools for investigation and forensic uh, activity. As you know, the incident response uh, and uh, computer forensics both deal with the same thing. Uh, they are response to, let's say, a compromised breach or attack. Uh, so um, the incident response will be focused on the containment of the threat or attack. But the forensics involves uh, through examination of the data in order to gain a complete understanding of the breach in order to remediate the attack and uh, prevent the recurrence of that. So, just a second. Uh, well, okay. So, the incident response is, as I said, the action taken immediately uh, following a security compromise, uh, attack, or breach, it depends on. Uh, what kind of incident we face. 
in addition to uh, shut down the attack, the responders must also uh, preserve, and this is, is really important thing to know. Uh, so the responder must uh, preserve all pertinent evidence uh, for later review and examination. Uh, the required team of experienced, uh, experienced uh, professionals who understand how to respond to the incident while carefully preserving evidence. Attempting to restore or recover information from a compromised computer, and this uh, is always an issue because when the organization says, for example, a ransomware, the, the first thing they do is they try to uh, restore the data, which uh, uh, make us to lose some uh, evidence. So uh, uh, the, the, the restore or recovery of information uh, from this compromised computer or network would cause uh, an irreparable damage to the file or the system. Uh, let's say that uh, a knee-jerk response can potentially do more harm than good. Uh, also, the most IT professionals are not equipped to respond to a breach properly. So they need the CCs or a team of professionals uh, to handle the most sophisticated breach event with precision and speed, getting the answers uh, they need and placing the organization in the best position to mitigate loss and keep their business. So, when we talk now about the cyber forensics, it's maybe the same thing as the incident response with some difference. So, the, the cyber forensics is uh, prolonged an attack. There are two important questions to answer. Uh, let's say, how did it happen? And how can it be prevented from happening again? So, there, the cyber forensics is the process by which experts, or sisters, collect, examine, and analyze all of the data from compromised uh, sources, computer system, network, storage device, etc. This is done in a manner consistent with the best practice so that the evidence could be admissible in a court of law if necessary, of course. So the evidence collection includes identifying and securing a fixed device and all data, including latent data from the system, latent or ambient data, is the data that is not easily accessible and generally take an expert to uncover. So this data is often hidden or even deleted by the malware or by the attack. Once the evidence is collected uh, and evaluated, uh, we will see how we do that. It undergo a detailed analysis to determine important questions, including the root cause, the scope of breach, or uh, what data may be have affected. Each step of this process must be carefully documented. I'm connecting on my phone and every time someone calls. Okay, so uh, let's see that uh, the complexity uh, even the rise. So uh, to meet this rising demand uh, of uh, customers for CCS organization are being forced to, to scale their operation in a way that introduce additional uh, complexity and so so CCS are more involved in operations and in incident response. Across an ever increasing mix of system, application, tools, and layer of abstraction, uh, this is resulting in more and more incident response and investigation operations. Of course, always uh, for uh, CCT. So, the digital operation scale within all organizations, one of the core challenges for CCL become ensuring the best possible intervention in the face uh, of degradation uh, and outage. So they have to improve their incident response for sure. So here, uh, I try to present for you the incident response, uh, let's say philosophy, uh, to be accurately orchestrating the right response for every incident, um, routine operational issues, major incidents, and everything in between. So this approach is built on a battle tested best practice. It provides the foundation for how CCDOT and health organizations go beyond just paying someone to look into an issue and instead address the full spectrum of uh, response needed. So the diagram starts on the left uh, with the beginning of the incident response, which is prepared. So the preparation phase involves putting control in place to prevent incidents from occurring on the network or uh, to the organization in the first place. We will see that. Uh, uh, it's not really the role of CC to, to prepare the organization, but uh, they have a role to play. So uh, 
at the end of uh, this life cycle. So we see how CSIR will um, prepare the organization and uh, encourage to put some control in it to, to be ready to face uh, attacks or cyber uh, incidents. So next, notice uh, how the arrow leads to the next step, detect and identify. During this time, the observe, orient, decide, and act uh, loop begin. So uh, uh, I, I will say the observe, orient, decide, and act loop, we call it the OODA loop. So just because the cycle is only on this diagram once, does not mean it will only be completed once during the detection cycle of incident response. You have to know that every incident is different, meaning uh, each incident should be treated independently. From the OODA loop, Contain and uh, eradicate are next. So those files, those phase uh, of the life cycle usually take longer than expected. So something you have to know, if one thing can be learned from incident response, uh, based on our experience, of course, it is that uh, setting a timeline or a time limit on the amount of work that will be put into the phase, uh, especially these two phase, contain and eradicate, is unpredictable. So uh, we cannot predict the time that um, we have to, to, to uh, invest to uh, achieve uh, the contain and eradicate uh, phase. It depends on the incident, it depends on how much is bigger the information system uh, of uh, uh, the client. It depends on, on a lot of things that, that make every incident, uh, let's say, a case of study. So after containing and eradicating, recovery comes next. So recovery is the process of implementing mitigation against the incident that has taken place, and of course, making sure that the threat is fully eradicated. So when we achieve this part, we element again the prepared phase. So here, in fact, we send uh, some recommended some recommendation in the report to uh, the organization to prepare itself and to assure that this incident will not happen again. So. The last uh, step or the final step, it would be the lesson uh, learned so, um, to the incident response life cycle, but this does not mean the world and there. Be sure to share the recommended uh, improvement and why those improvements will help to protect the network in the future. Uh, notice how the lesson learned uh, links to the beginning of the life cycle diagram. Uh, there should be constant feedback between the end of one incident and the potential uh, beginning. Uh, of the other. And there comes the tools that uh, had been shown um, uh, during uh, this presentation uh, by the ANSI team and Messenger. So, as you said, we have the duty to, uh, to act with precision and uh, accuracy. To do, we have to prepare our armada of tools, of course. Uh, and the, minimum of skills, let's say, and mastering of the school. So let's start by some um, organization, organization manner, let's say. Uh, first of all, we need for sure to save evidence for later forensic action. So we have to minimize the action taken on. Ideally, we have to take a forensic clone, even two, possible, uh, of every system in the scope. And it has to be a perfect clone, so we use tools like uh, SDK Imager or VDD tools. Personally, I prefer SDK Imager, which is more user-friendly and has a lot of uh, supported image formats. It will be shown during the hands-on uh, lab, and uh, you will see it's pretty easy to, to, to work with. So uh, we also have to take the raw memory back. It depends on the system you have, and uh, there is a lot of tools for every system. For example, regarding Windows system, we can use uh, magnet RAM capture. It's not only the one tools, but it's free. It's downloadable, and uh, you will get it immediately without waiting for approval. Because many tools, when you uh, fill for the, let's say, the download form, so uh, you, you have to wait for an approval uh, to give you the right of the link to download it. So these tools, you can download it directly. Now, once our clone is ready, and uh, we will talk about making clone before start investigating or uh, start uh, the incident response, 
But for the moment, now once our clone is ready, we can start collecting evidence from the clone or directly from the machine abstracted to the fan. Uh, even if I don't recommend in some situation uh, and with the pressure to recover as fast as possible, taking clone can be extremely annoying. I know that uh, from experience, but uh, if, you will, if you like to work uh, correctly, we have to take the clone before starting um, analyzing the, the, the machine, and then we can present the evidence for uh, elected use, for example, uh, as a, a court. So to do last year, uh, we had some tools that can do that automatically. Um, it wasn't before a couple of years, so we have to collect the evidence manually. But now uh, we, we can slam those tools and collect persistent evidence directly. Cake, for example, is a multifunction program that uh, primarily uh, collect file and process collected file with one or more programs. So uh, in K3 configuration file uh, on the fly, we see it during the, the lab also. And based on their contact uh, content, uh, the, uh, he will collect and process relevant files. This makes K very responsible, uh, as we will say later in the lab. K used the concept of target and model to do its work. And also, K comes with the range of default target and model for operation most commonly uh, required in forensic uh, exam. The next phase will be uh, analyzing case. Uh, now uh, we start passing evidence and understanding the case. Of course, we still have to manually investigate the artifacts collected, but those tools will help a lot for classifying and organizing the information as I collected. Uh, don't forget that uh, those artifacts will be a lot of gigabytes uh, without those tools. Investigating will become hellish. And when this, uh, this phase is done, uh, in many cases, it will, uh, it will turn, let's say, into malware analysis. So also there is a lot of tools that we will try to see. Uh, we will try to see in the lab, um, if we have time. Just remember, uh, malware reverse is hellish. So uh, those tools will just help us to extract some indicator of compromise and understanding the basic behavior of, uh, of the malware. But I will not turn into a real uh, reverse. We did this uh, to maybe another session. Um, and for sure, for antivirus editors, they work. So for CISER, reversing in, in, in malware will not be a part of our investigation. But we do it anyway, just a little bit. And uh, it's not a piece of evidence to extract the IUC and the pattern of compromise. And we shall stop debugging uh, a malware. It's really hard and uh, may need a really advanced skill depending on uh, the many layer of protection and anti-debugging mechanism uh, implemented on it. So uh, we do just a little bit to, to, to understand the behavior of, uh, of this malware. So here we start by uh, talking a little bit about uh, the tools that we will uh, see and the tools that we can uh, use during an investigation. So we start by the famous uh, autopsy is uh, uh, like they say, always the chief open source digital forensic platform. Uh, that is anything but difficult to utilize. That is nice for us because it's really user friendly, quick and usable in every um, let's say, uh, cyber examination. It analyzes hard drives, smartphones, media cards. Uh, it's primarily developed for Microsoft Windows. But uh, it can work also under, uh, on Linux and Mac OS. There is a minimal support for that. Uh, in the lab, also, we will focus on um, overview of autopsy cases, data source, so just wait for it. Even if you can install it on an impacted machine, Again, it would be good to remember that installing software on a mechanical machine should be really restricted and documented when it's done. So it's better to use autopsy on investigation machine part and just join a copy, a clone, or uh, an external uh, disk to be analyzed by autopsy. Try to not install directly autopsy on the affected machine or the affected machine to collect evidence.
Okay, here also some add-ons. Uh, this add-ons uh, used also by uh, autopsy can make some uh, text gesting so to analyze the foreign language and search for keywords, also for good triage. This is, is very useful uh, to, 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 to make the video viewable uh, thumbnail image so you can, you can uh, just uh, see what video uh, are, uh, are you interested in. Uh, we continue with the slurf kit. So the slurf uh, kit is a collection of command line tools, let's say, and the C library, so a lot of, of library uh, that allow you to analyze this image and uh, recover files from them. Uh, it uses generally behind the same, for example, in autopsy and many other open source and commercial tools also. So, uh, the slurf kit can be used uh, in two ways. So the C library or the, the, the library uh, made it in slurf kit can be incorporated into larger uh, digital forensic tools like autopsy, for example, and the command line tools can be used directly by the user. But it's a little bit hard to, to, to manipulate. Uh, in fact, uh, I made a uh, disk on mega.nz uh, that you can find uh, all those tools. So I will share the link after that with Mr. Nabil and you send it to you. Uh, so you can download all the tools and the machine that you will see uh, during the lab. So this kit is a little bit complex to use. Like I said, uh, in major case, we use Autopsy, who is certain, who, who, who use uh, Slash Kit library with uh, graphic user interface. Uh, so easy to use, it's more easy to use than uh, SlurpKit directly. Okay, now another tool that is really uh, interesting is uh, Matego. So Matego uh, offer meaning for gathering information about company or person. Uh, you offer broadly two type of reconnaissance option, uh, namely infrastructural and personal. Uh, for infrastructural reconnaissance deal with the domain covering DNS information, uh, such as name server, mail exchange, zone transfer table, DNS to EP mapping, and related information. For personal reconnaissance, on the other hand, include uh, personal information such as email address, phone number, social network profile, uh, mutual friend connection, and so on. So this helps for the information gathering phase of all the security related work. So, in fact, discovering the hidden information. In the same way, there is another uh, tool uh, also called OpenCTA. His goal is to create, uh, let's say, a comprehensive tool allowing uh, users to capitalize technical and non-technical information uh, while linking each piece of information to its primary source, for example, the missed event, uh, with features such as uh, link between each information. First and last, see in date, level of confidence. So the tool is able to use uh, the Mitra Tag framework also uh, to help structure the data. Uh, the user can also choose to implement their own uh, data set. So uh, once the data has been capitalized and processed by the analyst within OpenCTA, new relation may be answered from existing one to facilitate the understanding and the representation of this information. This allows the user to extract and leverage made for knowledge from the raw data. So you can, for example, just um, try it at demo.openCTI.io. I will try to, to uh, send to you the link on the chat right now. So you can you can just log in uh, with your Gmail account, for example, and uh, you have to know that uh, you will get only the demo. So it's not really the whole information uh, that he contains. So uh, I will show you also uh, just here. You have to sign up. Okay, for you, uh, he will ask you to 
to log in with your uh, Google account. So please do it because it's a really powerful tool. So we can go directly. I will not uh, explain the whole option um, in the shared disk that I will send you the link, as I said, to Mr. Nabi. So you will find uh, a tutorial about how installing and user uh, Office is there. But now for the moment, uh, I wish you uh, just some uh, great function. Uh, for example, here we can uh, go directly to, to the threads list. And here you can see a list of threads. Of course, when it's really unstanded on your uh, system, you will uh, grab a lot of other information. Uh, you can configure from here, from data, you can configure the source that uh, will be used by Office CTI to, to grab data. As you can see, you can use the MIS, you can use a lot of independent uh, Information source. You can use also OSINT module, OSINT framework to, to grab data and uh, parse it in your uh, interface. So, as I said, we go to trade. We can click here for China, for example, China strategic trade. It's an APT related to, to China. So, we can get uh, a lot of information about this, the, those uh, after. But something is really uh, interesting. It's uh, we have to know, uh, we can uh, know directly uh, the last relation created. For example, the pattern of attack, the vulnerability used by the screw, uh, another pattern attack. So it gives us uh, a, a lot of information. So we go to, to go through and have, uh, uh, let's say, a lot of information related to this. After we go to knowledge. And here, we have, for example, uh, 320 uh, pattern attack, 88 uh, malicious code used by this uh, group. Uh, also, they identified 36, 36 uh, tools used by this group. They uh, attacked it in total 31 region, etc. So we can go uh, to, to, to understand the sector uh, targeted by this group, we can find here the sector targeted, for example, of cyber society, consulting, defense, diplomacy, energy, finance. In fact, it, <coughs> this group tried to attack everything because it's related to, to a nation. Here, we can go to see who is the actor uh, identified in relation with this group, uh, the pattern of, of attack they use. Uh, if there is some uh, active campaign which is here, we can go to uh, pattern attack to understand uh, what tools they use. So here we see, as you can see, it's the meter framework, and for every case in the framework, they give us uh, what kind of uh, technique they use. So, for example, if we see in the execution. <coughs> The most using technique is the command and scripting interpreter. So they use a lot of, of scripts to, to PowerShell, VBC, etc. They use it to, to, to execute the malware and execute the exploit. It could be any one of those, but the most used one is the command and scripting interpreter. So we can see also related to this group the persistence. So the technique used to make the persistent uh, infection. So they uh, use the boot or logon for the start execution uh, or account manipulation technique, or they will even create a new account. Uh, they can also create or modify system process. So uh, this, those techniques are used uh, by uh, the spread to, to make the malware persistent. Also for the privilege escalation, the defense division. And this is, is really useful because, because when we have a pattern, we can go here. And when we see that the initial access were made by phishing attack, after that, we will found uh, a lot of script, PowerShell, or VB script. And after that, we can, for example, uh, found that there is uh, another start execution made it on the system to make it uh, persistent. And during the analysis, we found that trace for previous escalation, for example, uh, boot or logon or so So we can relate directly uh, the attack to this group. And after that, we can read about this group. We can take a lot of information about this group. And 
when we propose a recommendation to contain the incident, we can uh, take care of, of a lot of vectors of attack user by this group. So we will not only focus it on what we see, but also what other uh, actors in, uh, or other systems have experienced and uh, share with us. So we continue also, there is a lot of distribution used uh, to help investigators uh, those work. So I will not take a lot of time explaining this one, but there is the digital forensic framework, which is uh, forensic tools uh, and development framework, especially for forensic and uh, evidence gathering uh, work on uh, Windows and Linux also. So also there is this slide distribution desk, which is a distribution that contains a lot of tools that help also to make investigation uh, on uh, Windows and uh, Linux. It's free, you can download it directly. So also the Science Institute make uh, also have a distribution uh, called uh, the Six, six uh, Toolkit. So also it's a new VR, it's, it's a VMware uh, appliance free configured you can upload it directly in your SSD or in your virtual machine workstation tools, and then you can use it. There is also this tool scale, it's a small, but it's still a uh, good uh, distribution to use. Length size also, uh, it's not really for, let's say, extensive uh, investigator. Uh, let's say he can collect some basic uh, evidence called plain site, for example, uh, physical memory damage, uh, USB storage information, uh, internet history, and there is also much more. So uh, just make a search on Google, uh, on search for or on GitHub about investigation tools, and you found a lot of, of distribution and a lot of tools to help you uh, with that. So also it can be useful to, uh, to scan Sometimes you, you will find some application and you could not find the, the evidence that the attack happened. It can be, for example, some system uh, uh, that contain the misconfiguration and uh, uh, didn't preserve uh, the log or the, the, the trace. So we cannot uh, work on the event window, for example, or on the log system to understand what happened. So, but we have the, 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 the option to audit the application present and those system. And uh, depending on what vulnerability that is shown, we can elaborate other, our uh, scenario of attack and our, of course, uh, scenario of investigation. So we can use RATS, for example, to scan CVC++ therapy and HTTP code. So, uh, there is Sonar for Java, but it has some plugin to support other language. <laughs> and of course, there is a lot of other tools that uh, we scan the code and uh, he will determine the bug and the community. So, finally, we start uh, our hands on. So, I will share with you my screen again. Not the PowerPoint. Bravo, uh, I mean. Well, there is, I think, one minute left if you want. Uh... Okay, okay. I will show them just the, the CCS.TMP and uh, after that. Uh... Tracy, could we uh, extend a little bit the session or? I think no. Oops, can you hear me? Um, yeah, we can a little bit. I just want to probably ask the attendees if the time works. Okay, for them. thanks. Great, so go ahead, but rapidly, I mean. Okay, okay, I will try to accelerate a little bit. So, uh, we we'll start with the it's first step. Thanks for the audience to stay. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Okay, so um, we, we, I, I will accelerate a little bit. So, we have to start with the first step, as I said before. So, dumping the memory for that, for example, for Windows, you can use the MCA tool. So, uh, I have to, to tell you that 
the whole distribution would be uh, shared with you with distribution in uh, for investigation. So this tool is ready to use. So this is the one tool that really you are allowed to put on the unpacked machine. So you can put it and when it works, you can directly grab for you uh, a capture of your lab. So uh, you click on browse. For example, here, bureau, desktop. Anyway, uh, it's not this time on that. So we give him the name two, and we save it. Okay, now we can start dumping uh, our memory on this uh, on this file. Okay, I will let you. Uh, do his job, but now, in fact, he will directly uh, dump the memory, the content of the memory into this file. But in, uh, in fact, I did uh, another dump, this one, so we will work on it. We will not wait for that. So, when we have our dump of RAM, so we will analyze it through, for example, uh, a tool called volatility. Here, in fact, volatility is, is based on command line interface. So we found the uh, graphic interface for volatility and we install it directly uh, on this distribution. So when we will share the distribution with you, with you, so you can use the same uh, frame. I will go directly to volatility. So now we have just to give them the link directly to the, the path to the our dump of RAM. You will automatically know that this uh, memory dump is for Windows. Of course, we, we, can, we can support Linux system, Mac OS system also. Here we can choose the command that we need. And for example, uh, I will ask for information. I hope this is not get a lot of time. So, and now the command is running and is analyzing the raw file to give us some information. And this is, is very useful, uh, especially when we face uh, a malware infection. So, I will not wait for the start. Other tools that we can use also, as I said, so uh, we can use uh, the Africa images to uh, make clones. Of, of the digital, like we said before, forensic imaging is one of the most crucial steps involved in digital forensic investigation. So uh, let's say it's uh, the process of making uh, a backup copy or a copy, just a simple copy to for the entire hard drive. Um, so we can work with it. So to do, just we have here to choose the type of the physical drive that we, we have to copy. So, for example, if we install directly Africa Imager on the unpacked machine, so it will be physical drive. In our case, I attached an external disk to, to the to my machine, so it will be a logical drive. Also, we can uh, analyze an image file from DD, for example, or just the content of. So we give him here yeah, what uh, the logical drive, G, finish, and he will start analyzing the content of this uh, disk or image. After that, we can go directly to file and create a disk image. So now when we click in this, next, finish. And here we have to add the image destination. So we have to show its row, for example, the DD or the smart or the in case extension or the AP. So here we have to choose the, the extension. I, I recommend always to use the first one, the raw DD uh, image. So we can give them a, a reference, the case number, the reference number, the description, the minor, the name of the image. Of course, this is especially the, the right procedure that we have to do. So, right. And here the image destination portal. So we give them just a path to all the image, uh, the file name, for example, we call it uh, first. And we 
click on finish. So now I will not click on start because my VM I don't have a lot, uh, I don't have a lot of storage, but when I start, when I click start, you start in, making an image of the, the, the Apache disk. And this image will be a, a real clone of what I have on this disk. Even if I try to restore uh, the deleted data from this image, it will be the same as the real disk. So now I can present the real disk for the third and work on this clone. Also, uh, we can use the, the, the autopsy here. So I will show you because I, I don't see this. Okay. And autopsy can help us to collect the evidence directly from the system. So uh, as you can see, I lost it on the, my journey disk. So uh, you can see here, he classifies automatically the file by extension, by my type. He can also, uh, Recover the deleted file. Uh, he can give me an idea about the file size. So, for example, if I found the file with big, big, really big uh, size, it, 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 it has to be a database or uh, related to an attack to, 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 to push out the, the storage of our disk. So, also, we can find um, section data artifacts that contain a lot of useful information, for example, all the communication accounts. The email message, the installer program, uh, the meta interesting, of course, the delete selection here for metadata, operational system information, recent document, the last one, open it, uh, remote drive, use it, run program, share back, USB device attached. So, a lot, a lot, a lot of, of information that brings to us directly with his uh, parser. So, as you can see here for the device file, he store uh, 2000. Uh, 162.5 system. Uh, so I, I will explain because it will take a lot of time to, to bring me a show. So, and for the analysis reason here, also he detects the encryption suspected, for example, for 445, exit metadata extension is much detected. So some uh, malware use this technique to um, hide the uh, nature, uh, the web account also. Of course, this, those options are selected uh, when I clear this case. So now I have to stop it from working. Just to have a little free of resource so that I can show you how we create the case. So, in fact, when we start, um, so when we start the case, uh, the first thing that we show is that. We have to give him the case information uh, based directly where he will uh, store the collected evidence, and then we click on next. So here we give him a number and information about uh, the examiner, and then we click on finish. So once it's done, you create the place to store on the database to store evidence. And we will be able to choose the ingest module or uh, the option, let's say, the plugin used by Autopsy to, to analyze the evidence. So as you can see here, so I will not take a lot of time. So we'll take a look at this. Okay. Okay. Next. Okay. Here we will choose the ingest method that we will use to bring uh, the evidence back. So, as you can see, we can uh, search for recent activity, uh, hash, lookup, look up, file type identification, extension mismatch by detector, embedded file extractor, etc. So, there is a lot of of ingestion that you have to choose and then start uh, the data collection or the EBIT collection. Also, there is another tool that I have to show you. This one before. Of course, I will share with you this, this machine. Okay, this is the GK. 
one of the best tools. Personally, I prefer these tools and uh, I use it mostly. So these tools will directly check the system and click to me the uh, persistent event. So I don't need to, to see small. I can use directly the tools and they will bring me directly uh, the persistent event. So you can use target option here. We give them the target source. So it will be previously this. Uh, the destination will be on my desktop. For example, it's say zero. Okay. And then I will choose what I need uh, as evidence. So, for example, uh, all files with log files, MST, uh, let's say password, say text, uh, antivirus log, and test log, attack log. So, what's the kind of, of let's say, uh, information I need? I can also use the module option here to uh, choose also, uh, for example, uh, I have to, to find the based on the keyword search, for example, for emails, for URL, for feed, for NTP collection. So a lot of, of other uh, middle options, but sorry for that, I we don't have the time to, to explain all of them. So after the selection is done, we can uh, just execute uh, case and you will bring us something like that. So a lot of information here. For example, uh, when the log of, ah, uh, oh, sorry, this one is related to autopsy. So, a lot of, of tools uh, and of information. So, what we do with this one, because it's, uh, like I said before, it's a lot of gigabytes uh, of evidence collected. So, we have to use some uh, other tools that will help us to organize all of this data because. Doing this manually, we take a lot of time, okay? very, very lot of time. So I will close this machine and I will use this one. Uh, also this machine with it will be shared uh, on the same. And it will be the last one we will see. Uh, I will try to add on the virtual disk so we can the link to this in a bit. So uh, some other tutorials to help you uh, doing the investigation. So we put login. And we start. Okay. So, Twitter, uh, let's say it's a digital investigation platform that provides the capability for the investigator uh, and the investigation team uh, to pass search results collected evidence. Uh, in addition, uh, collaborate with other team members on the same platform by tagging the artifacts and presented as a timeline as well as a setting rule for automate, automating the detection um, of persistent uh, evidence. The main purpose of this project is to aid in streamlining digital investigation and allow advanced analytic capability with the ability to, to handle a large amount of data. As we said, it's always a large amount of data to analyze if we do everything uh, correctly. So we can go here. 
two seconds. And we can see the main interface. This one. Okay, so uh, the first one, first um, interface to show is the administrator uh, panel. So we have to create a case, so we give it a name. And if the status is active or not active, of course, when we say active, after we resolve everything, it will be turned to not active just to, 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 to take some traceability on, um, on the, 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 this case. So we save it. After we save the case, we can go in the case and we add, first of all, uh, the machine. So uh, we have to create a machine, for example, uh, machine one. Uh, IP address one, okay. and after that we can upload directly the data collected from this machine to be passed to be analyzed. So, uh, in the same case, in the same case, of course, we can have a lot of other machines. So we have, if for every machine we upload uh, the artifacts and the evidence collected using K or autopsy or holder or any tools, uh, even manually directly and Twitter will analyze the artifacts and will give us uh, a good view of uh, those uh, relations between different log events and different uh, metadata, for example, files. So I will show you a case just to, to understand it. So after uploading the data, we have to start uh, choosing uh, what process or how to handle uh, this, has, this data. So, for example, we can activate the MST to analyze the scattered tasks or a lot of, of um, let's see, models that help uh, to analyze and understand what happened related to the OS, to loading information, to program execution, to a browser, to other such location, to user activity also. So, we will try to, to analyze every behavior of the user or, of course, the attacker. So, here I prepare machine directly to show you because it takes a little bit of time to analyze uh, the data uploaded. So we can go directly on this machine. Next machine one, it's another case. This one. So we can directly go and we really see, how, for example, how uh, the, the, the Windows event uploaded. And uh, the different uh, evidence that I sent here. For example, now when we start analyzing, it's always complicated to, but even if it's uh, organized and showed uh, like that. So, what we see, for example, we can uh, say that this one with security events is interesting. So, I can see here again some information on the details here so about this uh, event. This is the information. And now, I will, for example, I will uh, search for other events happening in the same data type. Okay, so I click on the type here and we will analyze these days and grab to me all the events that are related to this one and happen in the same time. So now I can start investigation and give me uh, a good way or an easy way to understand how the relation. Uh, happen between uh, those events. For example, after that, so let's see that this event is related to an access using SMB, but uh, they try to access uh, an administrative, let's say, uh, sharing, which is ETC dollar. So this is an address. Uh, so I will try to find all the access for this uh, for this share and give me from here view of for every access made it to EPC uh, dollar. So every point when I click, I get a lot of information. And for every incident here or every event here, I can make a lot of other, uh, let's say, relations. For example, I will see also, we can see that this event is an access to EPC dollar using this address. I will found, I will, I like to know the whole or the all event related to this other. So I have just to click here and you will be directly, you will make directly a connection to 
all those events related to this IP address. So I can, after that, click on them and understand a little bit. For example, this address uses the login administrator here, as you can see. So I can also ask him to give me, to bring them to me, which the login used by administrator. And then we can continue we get a complete graph of what happened on this system. It will be more easy to analyze the whole data and the relation between the different events. Of course, here you see a lot of, of events, but uh, in a real case of attack, there will not be a lot of, of events like that because that's just simulation of uh, many attacks. So, and made it all from the one and only IP, which is mine, that I simulate those attacks. So, there is a lot of, of events related to my IP address. But when it's attacked, it will be always uh, distributed. So, from each machine, I will. I will get uh, some persistent information that they will help me to understand what happened. And uh, with this graph is in a visualization, it's more easy to link uh, between different events, events on different machines. So um, not to take a lot of your time, but after analyzing and understanding uh, what happened exactly, so we have the duty as a CCR to, to share the information. Uh, so we will not um, have the, 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 the lesson learned for us. So we have to share it for that. We can use uh, nice uh, application, okay. uh, which is uh, the uh, framework, this framework, um, let's say, uh, is an open source intelligence platform for gathering, sharing, storing, and correlating uh, indicator of compromise of targeted attack. So threat intelligence, financial fraud, information, vulnerability information, whatever, whatever, counter terrorism information, no problem. Integrating record future security intelligence data uh, into mismade operation, uh, operation uh, related to threat intelligence is uh, than ever. Of course, uh, the MIS empowers so CCS to respond quickly with uh, transparency and uh, in context, maximize the investment in existing security tools, of course, we need to understand uh, what is doing, and improve security team efficiency, uh, reduce manual research time, so we, we, we can get uh, information also from the MIS directly to see if our incident is uh, already documented or not. So if it's uh, documented, it will help us a lot to uh, understand what happened. Uh, just I will share with you uh, another link. This link is, uh, in fact, it's not really updated now. I have only just one uh, virtual machine, but there is a, a other machine that will be uh, added to uh, this folder. So I will try to upload all the virtual machine and all the tools that I talk about so directly. Uh, on this link, I will send also the link to Mr. Nabil to, to share uh, with all of you uh, using Make. So uh, we continue, of course, after uh, this armada of tools. And I don't talk about a lot of other tools really, because when we uh, investigate, it's, 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 it's let's say 100% uh, it will be some malware, uh, some. Uh, tools or malicious tools use it to, 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 to take access. So we have to turn into uh, a malware analysis after that, but we don't have the time for that. Uh, it, don't go through a malware analysis uh, so deeply, but uh, just to understand the behavior and watch the indicator of compromise to share it with other uh, And of course, <coughs> talking about that, so we have to uh, work small um, um, and then entertainment gradually. So we have to start, um, let's say, um, we don't go directly for the commercial tools and the big one, we don't having <coughs> the necessary skills uh, to mastering uh, those approach or the incident. But in fact, when we do the incident handling, or six, we have to deal with uh, network issues, system issues, applicative issues, and this uh, absolutely uh, everything. So uh, skill come first. So uh, try to make a lot of training. Uh, try to have a lot of experience. Try to 
to investigate evidence we don't have the capability ask the NC, ask the CDPM, ask Mr. Nabil also is our mentor uh, or has so uh, just to help you with that and uh, then you, you, we have the skills but the skills don't come alone so we would we have to work hard to uh, let's say have our uh, skills so of course um, another thing we have to to target is that we have to uh, prepare uh, a physical uh, disconnect network for the team to work on it. Of course, they will not analyze starting analyzing the malware or infected machine or infected machine um, in the same information system as this is it. So prepare your lab, prepare your tools, prepare your, uh, let's say, uh, sandbox environment that you would use to, uh, to, to, to analyze the malware. And this is not really something easy because we have to prepare also a whole information system or a simulation of the whole information. For example, sometimes when we analyze, we need the fake DNS, we need the fake ASC, we need the fake HTTP server. So we need a lot of fake uh, servers to simulate a real environment for uh, the malware. So here, again, we have to prepare our lab, to prepare uh, our uh, infrastructure to be ready to, uh, to analyze uh, and investigate affected machines. Of course, also uh, now with the mobile phone, we use it always and GPS device and also uh, and a lot of other, of other um, let's say, uh, tools. So we have to uh, have you the sheet back to uh, be sure that your phone will not communicate when you are analyzing uh, it and also the different cable and the different technique to access to this mobile phone or and to analyze it uh, you have to know that uh, some phone is uh, ios some phone is android some phone is so there is a lot of model and a lot of OS uh, for mobile devices that we need to, to support also uh, in our uh, lab so after that mr Marie, i give you all Thank you again. Thank you for the successful team. Thank you for you, the audience. And I give the word to Mr. Thank you. Thank you, I mean, for this great presentation.